Hello, everybody. Welcome to Trusty's Vintage Live Sale for Thursday, January 21st. We've got a, hopefully, uh, what will be a fun Welcome lineup to tonight for, uh, and it got an echo there that my, my phone picks up too. Uh, we're going to have a, hopefully a fun sale tonight, Some a lot of uh, variety in some of the items, and uh, maybe a shorter sale, maybe. I have fewer items, but you know, you know, y'all know me. I'm a talker, so I could probably fill several hours with two items. So uh, we will see how the evening goes. But appreciate everyone who has joined in. Uh, let's see, we've got uh, Dawn from the Just One More Dachshund Rescue. Don't think I've got any dog items tonight, Dawn, but uh, you're probably overflowing with them. Uh, Nate, our voice, our Kiwi voice from New Zealand, has joined us. Hey, Nate, thanks for being here. Uh, Judy has joined us again. Thanks so much, Judy, for coming back. Melody is here. That means I'm sure Halem is somewhere in the room uh, ready to uh, bid uh, against his wife. Uh, but you know what? There's nothing wrong with that. The more the merrier. Uh, let's see. We got Belinda has returned. Thank you so much, Belinda, for coming back. Uh, we've got a Canuck in the house. We've got Tia Fain has uh, joined us from Canada. So thanks so much, Tia Fain, for making me a part of your evening again. Really do appreciate that. Uh, looks like I got a new name, uh, Rose Spangenberg. So thank you so much, Rose, for joining us. Uh, I appreciate you stopping in. Hope you, maybe you've been in some of the other uh, sales. Um, appreciate you popping in and joining mine. Uh, go over, I'll go over some of the highlights of the uh, sale in a little bit or the way the sale will work. Um, but if you've seen any others, you probably know how it works. Uh, Linda has returned. Uh, let's see, so is anyone getting snow? I have about two and a half feet in just in the last three days. Where do you live, Linda? I don't remember. Um, Chicago is pretty much, we've had dustings, um, a little bit more on the sleet, um, you know, where they have to salt the roads and stuff, but we haven't really, you know, knock wood, we've not really had any accumulations since before Christmas. And most of the rest has just been dustings, but that just means it's saving itself up. Uh, Laura is uh, joining us probably while she's also playing pool. Uh, so good luck in your pool uh, competition tonight, uh, Laura. But thanks for always popping in and listening to us. Auntie Christie's back in the house. Auntie Kay uh, representing our West Coast contingent. So thanks so much, Auntie, for uh, being here. Mary Jo has returned. Thanks so much, Mary Jo, for joining us again. Uh, let's see. Jump now I've gone in the wrong direction. I can't figure out where I was. Uh, Katie is here from Vintage and Vinyl. Uh, Mary Cox also here. Mary. Hmm. I think you might be new. Maybe not. Either way, welcome. Uh, Michelle's coming back, one of uh, my uh, local uh, Illinois uh, representatives. So thanks. Uh, uh, she's a farther, I think she's farther south. I actually don't 100% know where she is, um, but I'm pretty sure she's farther south. But they probably aren't getting much, uh, much snow either. Uh, let's see, I just saw Nettie and then Nettie just disappeared. So I can't figure out where Nettie went. Uh, we got Larry Riley. I think you might also be a newbie uh, tonight. So thank you again for joining me, Larry. And there's Halem. He did not want to hide in the in the uh, lurk in the shadows tonight. So thanks for joining, Jane. Thanks for joining us, Halem. Uh, Jewel T, welcome back. Okay, so Michelle's down near Alton. So yeah, pretty much Southern Illinois, more along the lines, uh, just a little bit west of uh, where Jeffrey and Barb are from Real Nifty Vintage and Winking Owl Antiques. Uh, Kathy Morrison, uh, thanks so much for joining me, Kathy. Uh, Re oh, Mary's back. Hey, Reclaim Treasure by Mary. So Mary has her own live sale. So if you guys are fans of live sales, uh, Mary is pretty consistently doing hers on Sundays. I believe at 3 p.m. Eastern, but Mary, feel free to drop your information. Uh, it is Reclaimed Treasures by Mary on YouTube. Uh, she does some great photography work, so definitely, as well as vintage. So uh, definitely catch one of her sales. You'll probably find some great items at very good prices. Uh, Kenneth, uh, I've seen you on some of the other chats. Welcome, thank you for so much for joining. Uh, Sue, I think I might've said that. Um, I hope you're doing well, Sue. It sounds like you might be responding to something, um, but take care of yourself, Sue. Uh, and thanks so much for maybe doing some of your recuperation with us tonight. Uh, let's see, I um, think I caught up. I apologize if I missed something because for those who know, I'd use uh, StreamYard and every once in a while it just kind of jumps. And so it's hard to sometimes catch the right uh, person. But tonight I've got some assistance uh, in the house. Unfortunately, the Huckster Helper has headed back to college or at least her version of college. 
Uh, she goes to school in Pennsylvania, but they are still remote for the first half of the semester. Uh, so her last semester, she got an apartment with girlfriends in Pittsburgh. This time she's getting uh, an apartment with her friends in Virginia. So she has already headed out uh, back to school. Hey, Stacy. Oh, found again. Hey, Kelly. Thanks so much for joining us. Hope you're doing okay. Hope you're doing well. Uh, so, so glad to hear uh, some good news from you and seeing you back on the chat. So thanks so much, Kelly, for joining us. Um, uh, Kelly has been a member of our uh, some of our group sales. She was part of the Dachshund uh, fundraiser, and uh, hopefully she'll be doing some uh, more live content again uh, soon. Uh, regardless, so we do not have the Huckster Helper. However, I do have uh, some assistance this evening. Uh, in the chat will be Soul Nate. So he will be monitoring the chat. So you got to get your, uh, the number that you claim has to make all the way to New Zealand in order for him to see it first. Uh, he will be the one that uh, he will be designating the first person that he sees. But as our vocal voiceover, we will also have joining us in the chat will be Katie. Hello, Hello, Katie. Everybody. <laughs> Katie's back with us. Katie, was, we had a lot of fun the last couple of times I had Katie on. We did a live haul video. She added a lot of stuff to it. She also helps keep track of things in the chat. So we've got both Katie and Nate will be helping out uh, in the chat this evening. Uh, for some of the names that are joining, which are new, first, uh, Katie is with Vintage and Vinyl. Uh, so if you do not follow her channel, you should do so. She uh, on occasion does live sales. I have had her on mine before. Hopefully I will do another group sale with, uh, with her, but she also does uh, game nights. She does trivia nights. She does uh, uh, record reviews, album reviews for her vintage and vinyl. You know, she does actually not just have that there for, for phonetic reasons. Um, so she's got a lot of great content that she puts out there. She just hit her thousandth subscriber on YouTube. So she is really climbing her channel and uh, definitely everyone should reach out and support her. And Nathaniel should also uh, support. He's not put out as much content, but it is quality over quantity when it comes to Mr. Nathaniel. Uh, so he is 1969 Nathaniel is the name of his, his channel. Uh, so 1969 Nathaniel. And he has some amazing collections and collections of things that you don't typically see in the States. Uh, he's, so he'll talk very knowledgeably about things I've never even heard of. So uh, he's got some great um, videos on his channel and you should check those out as well. Uh, so for those of you who are joining in for the very first time, the way this evening works is very similar to most of the other channels that are out there. Probably the biggest difference is I do not do any sort of offer ups or auctions. So everything that I'm offering is at a fixed price. Uh, I feel that it's a very um, good, uh, attractive fixed price, uh, but it is first come first serve. So the idea behind this is I will show you the item, I will give you the price, and then I will reveal its item number. You need to uh, enter that item number into the live chat. Do make sure you're in the chat, not in the comments. So right now, if you do not see uh, this comment in your chat, oh, he changed his name. So, okay, I guess, yeah, Soul Nate is actually the channel because that's what's showing up here. Um, I guess I, I know his old school channel. You probably could still find it that way. But anyway, Soul Nate is the channel. If you are not seeing these comments on your screen, you are not in the chat. So make sure you're in the chat, not the comments, and you should be in the live chat, not the top chat. It does make a difference. Type in the number as quickly as you can. Uh, we will, whoever Nate sees first, uh, Katie and Nate will confer who's the first one, and uh, we will get a vocal confirmation of the person who will be claiming it. Please be advised, it is the first person that Nate sees, uh, and that might be different than what you see. You are the closest person to your own internet, so your internet likes you very much, and will often put yourself first to make you feel good about yourself. We are not here to do that. We are here to find the first person. So sometimes you can see a timestamp and you'll actually be able to see seven people all came in at the same timestamp. So it does make a difference of who we're seeing. We will put it in the text. We will also put it into the uh, vocally. And you know, don't get too stressed out about it. Everything here is just for fun. Uh, hopefully I found some, some items that you'll like. Everything that I give you in price is uh, not including shipping. So if you have not uh, bought from me before, send an email to the address you see on the screen, thmvintage at gmail.com after you've claimed an item. Some point after the sale, just give me your shipping address. I will send you an invoice with the cost of the item that you purchased plus the shipping cost 
for all the combined shipping of all the things that you bought. Once you pay the invoice, I ship your items. It's simple as that. Uh, from a simple uh, logistics standpoint, I typically will get try and get all of the invoices out by the end of the day Saturday. Uh, last week, I was using that definition to the nth degree because I think my last invoice went out around 11.55. So, you know, I, I do my best, but I'm doing this by myself. Uh, and sometimes it's uh, it takes a little longer to get some things packed up and figured out. Um, but I appreciate everyone joining in. Carolyn Gatles come back. Oh, Sandy, uh, Sandy uh, Four is joining us from Four Sandy's Lilacs. So thanks for joining in. Lavish Mingo has come back. Uh, Angela Marksberry, uh, that's another important name for everyone in the vintage community to follow. Uh, Angela Marksberry does have her own YouTube channel, but she also has an Instagram channel of A Marksberry, just the letter A Marksberry, and she does the weekly calendar. So if you are new to the concept of these live sales or new to the vintage community, it's a good uh, calendar to find. It lists all the other live sales. You can also follow Katie uh, on Vintage and Vinyl. She will post on Instagram daily calendars of what's coming up that day. We'll try, all of the resellers try and work together to give you as much information as possible. It's getting a little crowded. So unfortunately, some channels end up overlapping each other. We don't try and do it on purpose. It just has, it just happens. Um, but we at least try and give you the information. And if you are a reseller that I did not already shout out, or even if I did, go ahead and put your link in or name of your channel uh, when your live sales are or anything else that you do. Um, I think, uh, let's see, Auntie Christy. No, it was Mid-Century Wasted today. Had a, I think she had a brooch sale. Uh, but I haven't seen her today, so I'm not sure if she's here. Um, but anyway, I have wasted enough time with the introduction. We are going to go ahead and get things started. So I'm going to send Katie into the corner. There she's in her little penalty box. And we shall start things off. Uh, one of the videos that I did, uh, one of the last times I worked with Katie on screen, was a live haul uh, for some items that I picked up at an estate sale. And several of the items from that evening are now going to be in this sale, including this one. So this is a vintage sewing basket. I admit I'm not particularly familiar with how these are date, how to date these or how to know specifically how old this one is. I've had some where these, uh, it, these uh, pieces are much larger, they're rings, things like that. These just have very small beads on them. Um, the one thing that is notable on this is there does appear to be some sort of a marking in both the top and the bottom to indicate that these were originally designed to go together. So I don't know if that counts as a signature or any sort of date marking, but it is uh, the only marking that this has. It is a very nice fitting top. Uh, it does turn a little bit, but there's resistance to get it to turn. So it fits pretty nicely. Uh, and then these items are just decorative on the top. I do believe it is vintage. I do believe it is not American made, um, but not in a like a made in China way. I think it's just, it is, an, uh, I believe it is a uh, Asian design, Asian motif because of some of the knots that are incorporated into it. It's just a very simple piece. I believe it is designed to be a sewing box, but basically it is just an attractive little trinket box that you can put whatever you want into this and I am making it available uh, this evening for $8. So if you would like the vintage sewing box for $8, be the first person that Nate sees giving us number two, and you will receive that item. Number two, $8 for the vintage sewing basket. All right, the next item we've got coming up is uh, this is something if you've watched my uh, sales in the past, I've had many of these and I'm starting to run out. So it's one of these cases where it doesn't mean I'm not gonna have more, but at some point I had an opportunity to pick up a large quantity of these and uh, it's, uh, I'm hearing, I'm hearing Katie. I'm not used to hearing other things. Like, what was that? So that was probably Katie getting the message from Nate telling me who the first, who the first uh, claimant is of the basket. Yes, and Nate saying that Nanette gets number two. So congratulations, Nanette. That's a gorgeous basket. Thank you, Nanette, for picking that up. All right, so the next item is a set of Wade Whimsies. So I've tried to theme some of the Wade Whimsies before. I've tried to, you know, in some cases, they were part of the sets that Wade initially had made them for. In other cases, I just picked themes. And so this one I came up with somewhat of an odd theme. First, 
I have a series of the wades that are all, they're all sealed. So these came with rose tea. Uh, they were inserted in the boxes. So they were packaged to protect themselves and to not contaminate the tea. So these are all still sealed in the original plastic packaging. And what this is, is a theme of Wade Whimsies that are inanimate objects. Yes, I had to get a little, a little creative on what, my, what I had left. So what this ended up being was a seafoam green uh, compass, which actually is one of my favorites. I think the compass is pretty cool. So it's kind of like a seafoam green color. You've got a tractor. Let me see if I did the plastic is getting you uh, getting you a, a glare, but hopefully you can see the tractor there. And the tractor is it's pretty red. Yeah, I would I would say the color that you're seeing there is pretty true. It's not like a fire engine red, so maybe a little bit of an orangey red to it, but it's more red than orange. So you've got the tractor. You have an orange covered wagon. So you can relive Little House on the Prairie, you know, as, as you choose. I had a friend that just started watching, I think it's now free on Amazon Prime or something, Little House on the Prairie. And she watched the first couple episodes. She said she didn't remember it being so stressful when she watched as a kid because there was a fire, they were being attacked by wild animals, somebody stole their wagon, like all these horrible things happened. You think that that was wholesome times. Nope, it was the Wild West. This is definitely my favorite. This is a, a symbol that I use for my deep dives. It is literally a diving helmet. So you've got a blue diving helmet. And then you also have the green locomotive. So you've got a train with its coal carrier on the back. Um, again, also sealed. And it's kind of um, eh, like a forest green. It's not really as bright as an emerald green. Um, but so you've got what's really nice is a lot of the blades I've had were all very similar in color. This one you actually get, except for the train and the compass, which are similar in colors, you get a pretty variety of colors of these. So you get five Wade Whimsies, all in a variety of um, inanimate objects. You get five of them, and you can get them for $15. So $15 for the set of five Wade Whimsies, all sealed in their original packaging, $15 by giving me number 86. $15.86 for the five Wade Whimsies. All right. Do you collect Wade Whimsies or have you had any of those, Katie? I don't, but I've always been thinking I should start a collection because they'd be really great in my little uh, printer's tray. Oh, that's perfect. I actually did sell some, I mean, some people might know I have a booth uh, in a local vintage mall and we got a text from the owner saying there was a woman that was in the shop that day carrying around a printer's tray and she's they're like does anybody have anything that'll fit in it and i didn't see it it was actually my booth neighbor uh posted they're like oh check trusty huckster's booth he's got all those wade whimsies they'd fit in there perfectly she almost cleaned me out so it was it, it is it's a perfect place to put those little tiny pieces and they're fun like some of the animals are fun um, but this one, I, I personally like the compass and the, and the diver, the diver's helmet. The diver's helmet. And they saying that those Wade Whimsies number 86 goes to Lois Hoover. So congratulations, Lois. Thank you so much, Lois, for picking those up. All right. The next item, I don't remember if Nate was here the last time. And so if he wasn't, I'm going to have to just, I'll, I, I will have to monitor the chat in this one. Uh, for those who have seen some of the other live sales, uh, I give full 100% credit to um, Fat Bird Finds for coming up with the idea of mystery boxes. Uh, I have had um, several mystery boxes. They're always very popular and I have a lot of fun creating them. And so far I've gotten really good feedback for the people who purchase them that they like what they're getting. So the way I do my mystery boxes, I price them all at 15 bucks and I will have at least $30 worth of, of merchandise in there, 25 to 35, but usually 30 or up uh, to make it, you know, you don't know what you're getting. So hopefully you'll find something in there that makes it worth its while. Because they're so popular though, there's been some comments and there's been some creativity trying to figure out how to be more fair. Now, personally, I feel if you refresh your screen pretty, pretty frequently, you know, in between each item if necessary, you can get a pretty good chance at, even if you have a relatively slow internet, refreshing your feed helps a lot, but it also helps that I only have uh, less than a hundred people viewing right now. So you don't have as much competition on my channel as you might on some of the others. 
get me drinking and I'll have a, we can have a conversation about my thoughts on that. But regardless, it's quality over quantity. And I love every one of the 81 people that are here right now. Uh, so anyway, you don't have as much competition, but I still recognize, you know, I want it to be fun. So last week I came up with a new idea for how to do the mystery box. So I'm going to do it again. So we've got a mystery box. This is a miscellaneously themed mystery box. Um, and the, what I'm going to do is it's $15. All my mystery boxes are always $15. This one actually happens to be the box. All of this stuff is already in there. And the way we're going to do it is you do not know what the number is. Neither does Katie or, or poor Nate. Um, but what I'm going to tell you is instead of telling you the number and having you be the first person to claim it, what you need to do is I'm going to give you the range of where the number falls. And the first person that gets the number right will actually be the person that claims it. So it's a combination. At this point, it doesn't matter how fast your internet is, as long as you're in there, it's the, it's the person who can read my mind. So I'm sending this, I'm sending the waves out, I'm sending everyone the number. It is the number between, so the number falls between 20 and 30. So the first person to give me the correct number, and I will keep this up so no one thinks I'm trying to like set, you know, set the deck or anything. Uh, the number falls between 20 and 30. Put in your number, what you think it is. And the first one that I see, I'm going to have to do it as I see because poor Nate doesn't know the number. Um, all right. I just saw it. So I'm going to scroll down the number and I will ask for, ask for Karen. I've asked for Katie and Nate to verify the number is 23. And the first person I see with the number 23 is Karen Radford. Yes, that is the first person I'm seeing with the number 23 is Karen Radford. There it is. So Karen Radford, number 23. Congratulations, Karen. You read my mind. So you get the mystery box for $15. Um, so, you know, let me know what your comments or your thoughts on that. I still feel, you know, to a certain extent, I don't feel that auctions are any more fair. You know, there's some thought that auctions are more fair. I like the price to be good. I don't want to rent, run the price up. And again, if, if you can, you can do things to help your chances out, um, you know, by refreshing your feed, I just want this to be fun. So if that's, I don't want to do this for every item. My God, the sale would last freaking forever. Um, but for something like the mystery box, I think that's a fun way. I'm so happy, I, and, and I didn't even say it, but most of you caught it. You were all typing in like super fast, all of the numbers you could think of between the range. Um, so it's just like kind of luck of the draw. You know, it's just kind of fun. It's not gambling because gambling is not allowed. Uh, so this is just fun. So thanks so much. Um, and you know what, Icarus Cat, I considered doing more than one. And I decided for this evening not to. So I might do more than one next time because trust me, I have two more boxes set up. Um, but I did not set myself up to actually do it. Um, so it's, I, I, I figure I have to be able to ship all this stuff too. So only one box, one mystery box tonight, but hopefully there'll be some other fun stuff. And you know, like the Wade whimsies, I want to say only one person asked for it. So it's one of those cases that because you have less competition in my channel, you can still like, there's, I had like four items not sell at all last week. So you could send, you could claim that number today and you'd still be the first person. So it doesn't matter how fast your internet is. So it's just, there's a little bit of something for everybody. We're all here to have fun uh, and congratulations. And I need to write that down. Otherwise I will forget uh, Karen Radford for getting the mystery box. I, okay. love that. I think it's a great way to do it, Patrick. Well, thank you. And um, I, I kind of got the idea from Fabric Finds, they started doing it a different way. And the first time they did it, they were describing it. And this is what I thought they were starting to describe. And then they went down a rabbit hole. And I'm like, wow, that seems really complicated. <laughs> and so I'm like, you know, lovely to things to them. I mean, there's nothing wrong with what they did, but I'm like, well, if I just did it this way, I think that would be fair. I think that would work. I think that's not illegal. So, <laughs> you know, I was trying to stay on the right side of the law. Um, but oh, thanks. Uh, JW Van Minimal's come back. She's also relatively close to me. Met her in the uh, uh, at the uh, meetup that we did, and where actually I met Kelly for the first time. So, and Anne, thank you so much, and thank you for thinking this is fun as well. So I appreciate I appreciate the comments. All right, going to my next item. This ends up being one of those fun items that you know what everyone's got COVID hair. You can take these. You've got wool wool cards. 
you could just, you know, take your kid, uh, take, take him to town. You could just, you know, you've got these wool roving cards. To me, I'm a I'm a primitive fan. For those who've not been familiar with my channel, I carry vintage. I, you know, I love mid-century modern conceptually. Boho is a little bit too close to my childhood that I don't quite want to relive yet. So, you know, I'll carry it, but it's not my favorite. I'm more of a true antique, true primitive, my 19th century pottery. My newest additions, my 19th century copper luster, not for sale. Uh, starting to build that collection because I love it. Um, but these are the types of things that I think just look really good in vignettes. I built my life. I built my business around shelf sitters. These items literally are where you would put the, the wool from the sheet and then you pull it across and it would, it makes it pulls it into the right direction. If you spin your own thread and you shear your own sheep, here you go. Clearly, I don't think that is my target market right now. So these are just decorative pieces that you can pair them together. Or what I just feel is if you just put it up in a vignette, you've got a great tall backdrop to go with something primitive sitting in front of it. So yes, wool carters. Thank you, uh, uh, Rebecca. I think I said carding and I think I said wool, but I don't think I put them together. <laughs> so wool carters, they do have stamps on them um, that... I had a hard time reading. It was old Witten. The word wool I can see. So old. I want to say that says Witten. Oh, Whitmore, maybe. M O R E. I thought the O R E was a separate word. I think that's with the M Whitmore. And then patent. So it's patented. So anyway, so you've got a little bit of, of text on both of them. Um, the handles are nailed on. This one is missing one of its nails. So as a result, you know, you may not want to card your own wool with this one without replacing that to tighten it up a little bit. It's got a little bit of a wiggle. But again, these are just decorative pieces. They're really cool looking. And I had them in my booth for a while. And the uh, management complained because even though these are not, these are not nails, that was probably pretty stupid, but I can, oh, I can card my beard. Um, this is not a weapon in any way, but the management felt it was a weapon. Uh, so I've got a question from Linda of what year. Let's read with me because you might be able to see it better in this. Let me go to full screen. Excuse me, Katie. No worries. Can we see a year? I actually don't see where a year would be. I see the patent was over here, but I don't see a year with it. I don't. I'm looking. <laughs> I see number eight. Yeah, so I think that's either the size of the individual spacing or the size of the paddle. So I apologize. I don't know. Um, I do not know the, the specific age. So I do apologize, Linda. Um, oh, Rebecca used to have Suff Suffolk sheep. Well, that's cool. Um, so anyway, yes, Nate, I don't know. Well, I get it, you know, you're in New Zealand, so you probably know all about these. Uh, but these, I believe, are American. So anyway, they're just a fun piece. Uh, interesting little advertise. They do not, they are wood, but they do not weigh that much. So they won't very be very expensive to ship. It is $8 for the pair. So at $8 for the set of uh, wool carters, $8 by giving me number 72 Eight dollars seventy-two for the wool carters. Those are. I mean, it's not like I'm talking about Jimmy Carter, but all right. Refresh my screen. I was still stuck on my mystery box. All right. All right. Next item. Again, if you have followed, do we have any takers on that one? Um, I Nate. see. Lots people in the chat and I'm waiting for Nate's confirmation. Before I'll have to wait for Nate's ding and so then I'll know. Yes, here he is. He says number 72 goes to Melody's mini miscellaneous. So congratulations, Melody. Melody, okay. excellent. And did, did Halem try and help you out? Oh, I do. I see him his name too. So working them. together. That's a good way to do it. All right. If you followed my channel in the past, uh, you probably know the my entire entry into reselling, into vintage reselling, has only been going on for a little over a year. And it all started because of the community theater. 
I had developed, I was doing acting in community theater, but I was also helping doing set design and props. And I was accumulating a huge variety of items that I was using for theater. Theater is very important to me. I am very sad that it is basically gone uh, until COVID has been controlled, but it is what it is. Um, this is a collection of playbills that I had picked up. So they are theater playbills, but I'd picked up to be in a show as coffee table material for um, a show that talked about theater. Um, these are these were not the ones from Death Trap. These were from uh, Romantic Comedy by Bernard Slade. Um, so it covers over a 15 year period. Um, these are all pretty much from the same era. So I kept these together. I have more, um, but I'm keeping these together. And they're, it's, it's a mixed bag. First, you've got um, a playbill from Blackstone Theater. So that is a regional theater here in Chicago for last of the Red Hot Lovers. What's great about all of these playbills is you've got the ads. Almost all of them are promoting smoking because you know that's what you did back in the day. You know your your centerfold is a Winston Salem. Um, this one is cool because it actually has the envelope of the Ticketron tickets that came with it. Uh, this starred Jack Weston, Elaine Hyman, Ginger Flick, and Marge Marge Redman. I don't know who any of those people are. A lot of alcohol ads because once again that's what you did after the theater. You smoked and you drank. Um, got a Jack Daniels ad. So a lot of the ads end up being in black and white. Uh, this is a, a, what is this one, a Chevy Caprice. No one make cars like boats in the 70s. Yeah, so you've got the 70 Caprice. Some of the ads that were in color, where's the other color part? No, well, maybe it didn't. The Winston-Salem ad was in color. What was the other part of it? Um, anyway, so that's the first playbill. That's the that's Blackstone Theater. Um, why can't I turn the first page? Oh, there we go. Oh, look, it's more cigarettes. Eve <laughs> cigarettes. So I guess maybe that predated what's what's the what's the cigarettes for that were marketed to women? Um, oh yes, they were like long. They were like something thins. Virginia so, Slims. Virginia Slims, yes. So I guess this maybe predated Virginia Slims, the Eve cigarettes. Uh, anyway, so this one is Last of the Red Hot Lovers in the Chicago Theater. This is the Onto Washington Square Theater, which must have been renamed because this is a Broadway playbill for Man of La Mancha, also cigarettes. And I'm sure alcohol, let me see if I can find one of the color ones really easily. Oh, no, the color one is a hair color. The Clairol Cream Toner <laughs> Blondes. So you've got the Clairol ad in the front, and then we've got a Buick, a 67 Riviera. So you've got some great ads. So you've got the Man of La Mancha from the 60s. You've got Cabaret at the Imperial Theater. You've got Golden Rainbow from the Schubert Theater. And you've got the Star Spangled Girl, Star -Spangled Girl from the Plymouth Theater. And look, more cigarettes. Um, so you know what? You, you just go to town. This one is very similar. It has the same Clairol ad and Riviera, so it might be the very same era. Anyway, just a fun, filled conversation piece for your own uh, coffee table, or you cut them up for the advertising because you frame some of these ads, they would definitely be a conversation starter. So you get one, two, three, four, five. Five playbills, four Broadway, one regional. Five playbills for eight bucks. So $8 for the five playbills by giving me number 35. $8, 35 for the five playbills. I love Man of La Mancha, such a great show. It's n admittedly not one of my favorites. I, a couple of the songs I really like, um, but uh, it's it's a big one. Uh, it's it's definitely, it's, uh, and it's the, probably the, oh, that and Cabaret are probably the two best Cabaret. playbills that I have, that people that people know. Although I, I'd heard of The Last of the Red Hot Lovers too, although I don't think I've ever seen it or read it. Okay, um, but I that one but with all those cigarette smoking ads you really should have put those on your sin cart <laughs> <laughs> i've learned uh, quite a bit that um paper does not do well even when i put it in plastic people open it up and then it gets torn um I'll, i actually have an item in one of one of my items coming up uh i included a deck of playing cards that once upon a time was sealed and then i put it in my booth it is sealed no more so I'm getting very frustrated with the way people are treating things in the booth. But I've talked to other people, and I evidently that's the norm. 
Um, so anyway, so we got to take her on the playbills. Yes, I see Nate saying that number 35 goes to Michelle Ann. So congratulations, Michelle Ann. You've Excellent. Congratulations. Thank you so much, Michelle Ann. I appreciate that. All right, the next item admittedly do, uh, kind of goes away from my tradition of vintage. This is Trusty's, Trusty's Vintage Live Sale. But this is an item that, again, I purchased to go into my booth. And because it has extra pieces, I decided not to. So I'm bringing it here. We will see what you can see here. So let's see if I bring it up. Hopefully you can recognize the silhouettes. Who we got, Katie? Oh, I see Mickey. Who's next to Mickey? Mickey Donald Duck. There you go. And Pluto. And Daffy Duck. No, not Daffy. Daffy's Warner Brothers. Oh, she's she's Warner. Okay. Uh, what's Donald Duck's? The girlfriend Daisy Duck. Duck and the many. <laughs> yeah, so we've got a mini Mickey, Pluto, Daisy, and and Donald um, coat rack. So it is. It's solid black. It's metal. It's not like ridiculously heavy, but it is metal, probably aluminum. But what it came with when I picked it up was the wall hangings. To, these are suction cup hangings to if you attach it, I guess somehow attach it to glass. Well, I don't know. And then also the wall anchors, which is probably more traditional way to hang it. But all of these were together when I got it because it came in a bag. And what I got concerned about was if I put them in my booth, which I think it would have sold really well in my booth, I was afraid that these two pieces would get taken away from it. And then if they got taken away, it might not sell as well because people want to be able to put it all together. So I just decided, you know what? It's a fun piece. Uh, I, I came across it kind of like by a fluke because I don't normally pick something like this up. But, you know, everyone loves Disney. And I just think it is a fun piece, whether it's for your you know, hall closet, you know, coat closet, um, you know, for your kid's room, whatever. It's got one, two, three, four, five, six hooks on it. So I think it'll hold a lot. It's just a really cool piece. And it's only 12 bucks. So $12 for the Mickey, etc. cetera, uh, Coat rack, $12 by giving me number 87. $12.87 for the coat rack. You are never too old to love Mickey Mouse, I don't think. <laughs> What's that about Mickey Mouse? You're never too old to love Mickey Mouse. I think mean, that is absolutely true. It's still magical. <laughs> I haven't been in Di now, how far are you from Disney World? I'm about two hours. Oh, okay. So you're still you're decent. Like, you can do it in a day, but you're still a decent distance from it. Yeah, I haven't been to Disney. I think I took the Huckster Helper when she was a freshman in high school. So I've been there. I was there seven years ago was my last time. So some people I know haven't been able to go at all or haven't gone at all. So I, I consider it lucky. Hey, Barb, we were just talking about you. Hi, Barb. So we got any takers on the Mickey wall hanging? Yes. Number 87 goes to Jewel T. So congratulations for that fabulous pickup. Thank you, Jewel T, for picking that up. I think uh, you this might be the first time you bought from me, so just send me an email. Um, and I have to just say, every time I hear your name, Jewel T is similar for people in the Chicago area. There is a store called Jewel, J-E-W-E-L. And where I used to live, there was a historic district called the Jewel T the Jewel T neighborhood because the Jewel T, as in like drinking iced tea, manufacturing facility was there. And so there's all of these absolutely phenomenal homes from the 1900s, the 1920s. Uh, some just gorgeous, very high ends where the, uh, the corporate execs lived. And so Jewel T to me is that area of Barrington, Illinois. Uh, so it's first of all, like Jewel T, wait, what? Jewel T. So you, you spell it differently, but welcome regardless. So congratulations. All right, next one. This is an item that... I had a larger one that went into the booth. And so I decided to take this one and bring it into the sale because I think that this is just one of those popular pieces of it's that iron stone that so many people like that this one is admittedly fairly heavily crazed. I did some soaking with baking powder. I did try and do some cleaning, but you can see there's definitely some of the crazing has become discolored. So this is probably a decorative piece, you know, high on a shelf or underneath a larger display. 
it is a good size piece. Um, you're probably talking, you're, you're about 11 inches uh, by about 14 inches. So it's a decent size, but not so big that I won't be able to ship it. Um, so this one is just, I, I've got the larger one in my booth. I also have the coffee pot and the creamer and sugar in my booth as well. I just thought this was fun, but because of the crazing, I wasn't sure how popular this would be. The ones in my booth have a little bit more pristine appearance, but a lot of people like that. You know, they like that vintage, you know, worn in look. Um, but it's, so it's not technically damaged, but it's definitely crazed and the craze is staining. So you probably could say it's damaged. Other than that, it's not, there's no chips, there's no cracks. It's a very solid and sturdy piece. It just has major crazing. So since it's not perfect, since it's not pristine, but it's still very, very cool and it look great, great in display. It's been sitting on my, my it's been sitting as a stove top. This, this is literally how I'm using it. It's been sitting as a stove top piece on the grill uh, in the center of my stove. Uh, as a piece to hold the spoon rack and a couple other things. Uh, so you can do this as, I can't remember what they're called, but like the stove top pieces. Lots of uses for it. Not in perfect condition, but it's a perfect accent to any home. 10 bucks, $10. Okay, what kind of moves do you need there, Michelle? I'm gonna be grooving my hat. So I'm not sure what what uh, what moves you're looking for, Michelle, but I, I'm more than happy to oblige. But you got, for right now, all the moves are going to be toward the keyboard. Ten dollars for this very large, cool, and it's called the Copper Luster T. Uh, happens to be since we're talking about tea, that's the pattern: Copper Luster or Copper T pattern. Ten bucks by giving me number fourteen. Ten dollars fourteen for the moves. <laughs> Rocking and a rolling. Do you collect Ironstone, Katie? I don't, but I know I've seen it in the live sales and I know Misty's talked quite a bit about it. So I'm always on the hunt. Um, it looks good with like a lot of industrial stuff. And I know you collect the industrial. So I didn't know if you had any of that as like a back backdrop. It would look really good on the top of my cupboards in my kitchen. And I love that. Didn't see any takers for it. So I'm just going to put it here. So if anyone wants it later, they can, uh, they can grab it. Looks good on the piano. Yeah, no, it's a good looking piece. And like I said, like my stove top has the four gas burners and then the middle is like a, a long, um, the grill piece that I've got a griddle that sits in there. So it fits perfectly between there. So I could put stuff on, you know, put stuff on to take it off the counter, give me more counter space. So I actually liked it. And to be perfectly honest, if it doesn't sell, that's where it's going back. <laughs> so because I'm totally using it. Um, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna do the the uh, the the workout. It's it's a lot it's a lot easier with a coaster, you know. So I don't know I don't know how we're gonna do a lot of calisthenics with a coaster. So a couple new names coming in. Hey Harry, how you doing? Um, not sure if any of you are coming in from New Orleans, but I picked this one up. If you again, if you know my channel, you know I can't stay away from coasters. This one technically is not a coaster. It has the holes on it to be able to be hung. So it is a wall hanging, but it is the same diameter and it is primarily flat that it could be used as a coaster, but it is a decorative plate of St. Louis Cathedral in New Orleans. Now, what I found interesting on this is the only images of that church I've ever seen have that big horse in the front of it. Uh, and I think the horse is Jackson and I think they call it Jackson Square. So I don't know if this is old enough that the horse isn't there yet, or if this is the other side of the building. I admittedly do not know New Orleans that well, um, but I knew it well enough that I recognized that building and I knew this was New Orleans without reading it, but I'd never heard it called the St. Louis Cathedral. It's not stamped in any other way. So it literally is, you know, if you've been a visitor to New Orleans or you live there, or you just like really cool cathedrals, it is a little, little knickknack, little collector's piece. And that little knickknack's gonna cost you two bucks. I don't have the bargain bin tonight. So instead I just kind of dropped a couple of the $2 items throughout the evening. So you've got $2 for the little uh, New Orleans collector's plate slash coaster. $2 by giving me number 84. $2, 84 for the New Orleans coaster. That's a bargain. My dad got yep. married at that cathedral, so I, I recognize it. Okay, Maggie, who's selling a $9 Snoopy with no nose? 
I would agree. <laughs> anything missing its nose isn't worth anything. Uh, much less nine bucks. Unless it's like the size of a house. So welcome, Maggie Sue. I don't think I'd recognize your name. I don't think I said hello to you earlier. So thanks for joining um, Maggie Sue, which I'm going to want to say Peggy Sue every time I see it. But we will go with Maggie, Maggie Sue. And number right. 84 goes to Karen Donnellinger. So congratulations for that fabulous New Orleans piece. And Karen will probably use it as a coaster because she has a coaster collection that rivals my own. And uh, she has also started, I don't have, I don't know if you've made it public yet, Karen. So if you've started your uh, Etsy shop, make sure you drop the name of it in the chat. Uh, everyone can support Karen. She was, uh, she donated some items to the fundraiser uh, even before she got her own store up and running. Um, and she's a frequent member of the chat. So uh, thank you, Karen, for picking up the New Orleans, the New Orleans course, coaster. And, Barbara, and since her Goodwill was trying to sell that Snoopy without the nose for $9. Yike. That, I will have to say, and I'm not sure why, in the Chicago area at least, we have a Goodwill, maybe with a little exaggeration, but not by much, we probably have Goodwill every five or 10 miles. They're very, there's a lot of them, they're very close together. And they're in general, they're pretty good. Their pricing is creeping up, but it's not as insane as what I've heard some other people talking about in other parts of the country. Um, you know, they definitely know what, quote unquote, what some things are worth, or at least what they think they're worth. Um, so that some items get like a higher price to something comparable that has a different label. So they are paying attention. Um, but I'm of the philosophy with a lot of the thrift stores because admittedly, this is something I didn't realize was not universal. Our thrift stores pretty regularly, they do everything's by color and you get a 50% off color for the entire week. So when something goes up, say it's $10 and you think, well, that's not worth, say the $9 noseless Snoopy, that's not worth $9. It may be worth more, you know, quote unquote, whatever. If it does, but if it doesn't sell for three or four weeks, I can't remember what the cycle is, it goes to 450. You know, so it's like at some point it does get knocked down in price. And so if you, you know, it's where people say, oh, mugs are $2 now. I can't believe they're $2. Well, but if you just want a mug for yourself, $2 is a totally fine price. It's just right. not a great price if you want to resell it. So it's like, okay, so if somebody wants a $2 mug because they like a Snoopy mug and they want it, they're going to pay $2 and they can go for it. Hey, more power to them. But if it's not anything anybody wanted, well, it's going to be a dollar in a few weeks. Okay, maybe that's when I pick it up and then I can try and sell it for like five, you know, where I'm not going to buy it for two or $3 and try and sell something for five. Um, you know what? It's, it's all about having some fun. You want to make some money too. But uh, anyway, I pulled the next item is, uh, so Karen's saying hers are going up. Um, oh, yours has less glassware. My God, ours are flooded. Um, I have a very, very, very good Goodwill, very near my house. Uh, but Karen Donnellinger's in the house. So I've got Karen Donnellinger houses. So these are both, um, I bought these together. I'm assuming they were part of a series or a set. I admittedly did not look to see what other ones they had, but they are one of my favorite labels. And I don't know why, but one of my favorite labels to find is Takahashi. So it's a Takahashi label. They always have that gold foil label. They say San Francisco on them. And they do a lot of pieces that are San Francisco based. So these look like the full house houses, you know, the little painted lady houses on that street. What's cool about these is they obviously were designed to go together. You know, they've got the, they both have the stamp, but if you look at this one, there's also that big rubber piece. It's a bank. So you've got a little blue bank that's one of the painted ladies. And then the yellow painted lady is a box. So you've just got a cool little trinket box, kind of a tall trinket box, but you know, put a pack of cigarettes in there or something. You've got a trinket box plus the little bank, which still has the stopper. Um, now this is, you can probably tell with the light hitting it, it does have a high gloss glaze. For people that are familiar with Takahashi, a lot of what they do is a more of a bisque finish, which admittedly I like more. I know I'm weird. Um, so some people like the high gloss. I actually prefer the bisque. Um, but these are high gloss. They're painted on all sides and they are in perfect condition. There's no chips, no cracks. Even the slot for the bank is still in pristine condition. Uh, this, these were probably not used. There is, I, just for full disclosure, there is a little place on the back where there's a white in the corner. 
but it's been glazed over. So this was a manufacturing flaw to the paint and then they glazed it. So it's not a chip. There's nothing wrong. There's no paint loss. It's just when they initially did it, something happened. So then when they glossed, they did the glaze, it just went white. So it's in great condition. They're very cool. I am going to sell them as a pair and I'm selling them for $14. So they're seven bucks each for the little um, pieces, which is what I typically sell them for when I do them individually. So 14 bucks for the two painted lady houses, the bank and the trinket box by giving me number 47. $14, number 47 for the two pieces of Takahashi. I love when things have foil label and I think that foils is so pretty looking. Yeah, and I and I know a couple of them. The later ones don't uh, were not made in Japan. These were both made in Japan. I don't know if I mentioned that. Um, I so I think they were in business for a while um, because I think I did see one one time that was said it was made in Taiwan. So they did stay in business for quite a bit. But I guess Takahashi Karen probably knows more about it. Oh, so Karen's saying there were seven in the series. So they're from the '60s. I think Takahashi basically they were the importers. So they had them manufactured in Japan, but then they imported and sold them in the U.S. So they really were for a U.S. market. Um, so I just really, I just, I like almost everything they've done. They do little trinket dishes. They do coasters. They've done all kinds of fun stuff. Uh, they did a wall pocket. I I almost kept. Um, but anyway, I thought these were cool and I almost kept the bank. <laughs> but I can't keep everything. So do we have any takers? Yes, we do. Number 47, the row houses. Takahashi goes to Auntie K. So congratulations, Christy. Those are great. So they're heading back to California. All right. Thanks so much uh, for picking those up. Oh, we got another new one. John and Marianne. They seem to know you, uh, but I do not know John and Marianne. So thanks so much for joining. And hey, hello, Linda. Thanks for coming in. Elaine. A bunch of people came in I missed because uh, we're not at 81 anymore. D's here. So she's another one you want to uh, follow her channel. She does some great uh, live sales. She also supported the Doxin fundraiser. Always like to give a shout out to the Doxy, uh, the Doxy supporters. Uh, hey, Vintage Uprising Texas. Hi, um, all right, so I think I, I may have missed a few and I apologize if I did. Okay, the next one is big and heavy, but the benefit of media mail. Wait, get rid of the text, okay. Uh, if you follow me on Instagram, you actually saw this stack was promoted in one of my preview uh, uh, pictures. Last week, I did a collection of 1968 uh, issues of Saturday Evening Post. This time I've got 1968 issues of Life Magazine. So we'll do the covers first and then we'll do a little bit of the advertising. Uh, what I did, I actually still, I have stacks of some more of these. Um, so what these are is I felt with the inauguration yesterday, uh, these all have some sort of a political uh, theme to them. So this one is uh, Robert Kennedy running on the beach which with his dog. We've got, okay, we're stretching the political reference, but we've got Jackie, Ona Jackie Kennedy's marriage to Aristotle Onassis. So that's the cover image to that one. That was November 1st, 1968. We've got the Nixons and the Agnews. That was August of 1968. We've got corruption, the Chicago police, because you know, we'd no, like nothing more than to talk about Chicago corruption at the Democratic Convention here in Chicago. So this was 1968. We got the French spy scandal, which admittedly I know nothing about, but if I cared, I could read the Life magazine. Uh, this was April, 1968, Philippe, Tirod de Vos, okay, I need Dawn to pronounce this. Something of French intelligence. He's got a cool name. So anyway, we got that one. We've got the Nixon era begins. That was November, 1968. We've got Czechoslovakia, death of a bright young freedom. Fun filled cover. Uh, that one was August of 1968. We've got September of 68, Humphrey and Muskie. And August of 68, Law and Order, Volatile Campaign Issue, Security Alert for the Democratic Convention. And the last one is actually from 1969, Our Journey to the Moon and the Interview with Sir Han in Jail. So you've got kind of a range of uh, political happenings from 1968. So you've got 10 issues of Life Magazine from 1968. 
we've got a Coca-Cola ad just for you, Katie, right in the back of one of the issues. Uh, we've got, oh, look, more cigarettes. We got the Marlboro Man. I haven't seen him in a while. Ad. I haven't seen the Marlboro Man. I don't Does Marlboro Man still work? Oh, look, another Coca-Cola ad. He's still on any advertisement, but those Coke ads are great. So there's like a full page Coke bottle with like a creepy little family stuck in the bottleneck. It's like yeah. a dream of genie in a, in a Coke bottle. So those are the back covers. So this is in 68, the interior ads had already gone to color. So this is a Ford ad. I'm just opening these randomly. So I've got a Ford ad. Uh, I've got a picture, a cool picture of a moon. So this was the our journey to the moon issue. Uh, let's see. A lot of the photos are black and white. We've got some more in color. So these this appears to be an era where they had to pick and choose. So like it looks like like half of the pages, the ads are in black and white and some are in color. This is an ad for port, something you don't see every day, but a color ad for port. So that was all out of the Sirhan issue. And that was randomly. Oh, look, more cigarettes. No, gin. Gin. Yeah, we have, we have all kinds of sin going on here. <laughs> but we also got, oh, that's kind of cool. Look at this picture, these lions. They're all just like, they're sleeping on little ledges. I don't know what they, what they must be in a zoo or something. They just built all these little ledges for the lions to sleep on. So anyway, all of these, all this time dedicated to magazines that will ship via media mail. I shipped the Look magazines to California and they were 10, look, actually there were 11 Look magazines because I couldn't count. Um, that added, I believe the entire media mail shipment for all of the magazines was something like $6. So these, even though it's going to be heavy, uh, it is not expensive to ship. So um, it may take a while, so just be aware, but you're probably looking at like five to six bucks to ship it and you can get all 10 issues for five bucks. Wow. For $5 for 10 issues of 19, all of 1968 and that one 1969 of Life Magazine. These are the oversized five bucks by giving me number 49, $5. Wow. 49 for the stack of life. Lots of great history there, Patrick. There, Yeah, it was fun kind of putting them together because I've got some other more social ones that I'm like, well, let's, you know, it's the timing wise. I didn't really have a theme for this sale, but I'm like, hey, you know what? Let's go ahead and do that. Um, and yeah, just kind of looking through and trying to find covers that made made sense uh, to go together. And you know, I got them at a good price. So I'm more than happy to pass them on to all of you guys. And I have more. Um, so there'll be... I think I still have, I have a look, man. I think last week was a Saturday evening post. These are most of the lives. I still have a stack of look and then I've got like random other ones and I've got two years worth of TV guides too, if anyone wants those. Um, so anyway, got any takers on the life magazines? Yes. Number 49 goes to Belinda Carroll. You got a screaming deal, Belinda. So congratulations on that. And let us know, Belinda, what you end up doing with them. If you like, if you do junk journaling or if you frame anything or if you resell them, I have no problem selling to resellers. So I don't care. I mean, but sometimes any, that goes for anybody. When you buy something, if you put it on display somewhere, put it, if you're on Instagram, post it on Instagram and then tag me and I'll share it. You know, let people see what you do with them because I, I do try and do everything's vintage. And what I'm struggling with at the uh, Rustic Fox where I have my booth is people want Magnolia Farms. They want they want Hobby Lobby vintage. They want Michael's vintage. They want fake vintage. And it's trying to figure out how to, you know, find things that people can use in their homes and use for display, like the Ironstone, which you guys didn't even buy. You know, trying to figure out what would people want to put into their collections. So anyway, if anybody finds anything, puts that definitely in. Um, Put it into Instagram and tag me, TH Mercantile, and I will actually definitely share it. Uh, so here's another item, uh, vintage. This actually came out of my booth, and I will admit this was a close call. We are being penalized at the booth $100 a week for any, if we do not have all of our items converted to the new tags. So if oh, people have, have followed my sales in the past, you know um, that was a project, and a lot of the stuff I've been selling has been stuff that I didn't have tagged properly in my booth. This was sitting in my booth and I hadn't redone the tag. It was totally by accident. I don't know how I missed it. I suddenly saw, I'm like, oh, shoot. I grabbed it. I'm like, okay, going to live sale. <laughs> so it's a set of one, two, three, four glass coasters. So you've got this cool pinwheel design in the, in the coasters. They're molded glass, pressed glass. They stack in this little holder and the holder is... 
very loud. The holder, the holder to my knowledge is not stamped, but it is tarnishing slightly. So I believe this is a silver plated uh, holder. So it's just got the flat bottom. So even if you didn't want to use the coasters, you could put a candle on there if you wanted to, and this would make a pretty cool candle holder. Um, but it is designed to hold the sets of coasters. I had it in my booth for $12. I'm selling it here for six. So set of four coasters in its silver plated uh, ca carrier, $6. And $6 is giving number 39. $6.39 for the glass coasters in metal stand. That is such an elegant set. Pack. Yeah, I really like it's not necessarily for everybody, but I actually left the tarnish on there because I think it starts drifting into that industrial look like what you've got. You know, you can put this among, you know, a bunch of metal pieces and then you've got functional coasters that are just glass. You know, it's just it's just kind of a cool, a cool, uh, you know, co combination like uh, I'm trying to think of the word, but like alternate or opposite. And Nate's probably in the chat going, please let me polish that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Nate. We're going to, if somebody wants to polish it, they are more than welcome to. But I have not been polishing my silver and my, I don't carry silver very often, but I've not been polishing the ones I do because several people have told me it's actually the tarnished stuff that sells better at the store. Um, but I, that's why I don't carry silver because I don't like necessarily all that tarnish either. So uh, got any takers on that? Yes, number 39 goes to Linda Clark. Congratulations, Linda. That's beautiful. Thank you, Linda, for picking that up. All right. Um, one of the items, uh, again, I mentioned this before, the video that um, Katie had helped me with before. This actually goes back a couple of videos. I'm trying to think now. I did a, uh, I think this was the live haul video. I did a video haul of a bunch of games and I just did a video on games and it was a lot of fun. We didn't play the games, um, but we kind of went through them. There were a bunch of people in the chat. We did it live and people remembered the games from their childhood. It's a couple of the games no one had ever heard of. So there's still a couple I haven't figured out what to do with. Avante, anyone knows Avante? We're still trying to figure that one out. Um, but I decided these are some of the smaller ones. I did not want to put them in the booth because again, pieces get you know messed up, they get scattered around, things get opened. Um, so I decided, you know what, I'm gonna make it a lot. So what I've got from, let me separate these two out. So these four items were part of the uh, live, the live video that we did. So we got Grapple, which is from Parker Brothers. It is flip, uh, let's see. It's a scrambled word game. So it's kind of like, it's kind of like Scrabble. The idea is you make a word and then you scramble up the letters yourself. And then you spin the uh, the thing, hand pass that around and people try and figure out what you spelled. So I had never heard of this one. So this was Grapple. So this is included. I've got a round puzzle that I put together. So all the pieces are there, but it's this vintage round puzzle from Tuco Workshops. And it's this um, uh, Scottish, uh, the Scottish guard in front of a castle. And it is a round puzzle. We've got Password, the 12th edition, the new 12th edition, new probably being the 70s or 60s. Most of their games are from the 60s. Uh, Milton Bradley. So you've got Password. And then my personal favorite, because I grew up with this one, Pokino, where you can teach your children poker. Uh, so this is the poker slash bingo card game. Um, it was like a flashback when I saw this because I'd forgotten. I used to play Pokino all the time as a kid because, yes, my parents corrupted me. Um, so we've got Pokino. We've got Password. We've got the puzzle. We've got the grapple. Those were all from the live hall. And then two other items. One is the deck of cards I mentioned earlier. These are Moraine, Moraine Lake. So here you go, Tiafane. This is my shout out to Canada. Um, it is a deck of cards that once upon a time was sealed. And then some person who will burn in the third ring of hell uh, ripped open the seal and left them spray. Like, they didn't even like put them back. They literally like spread them out on the, ta on the table. They just oh. spread them all over the place. So I had to recount them, make sure they're all there. And they were. The Jokers are even still here. Um, and the Jokers are look like that. So some people care about the Jokers. So this is a made a made in Hong Kong set uh, souvenir piece from Moraine Lake. It wasn't an expensive set to begin with, but so I'm including that into this. 
And then I'm also including a set of dominoes that is incomplete. It is a German set of dominoes. It is one domino short of its full set, um, but it's not a double six because they're actually German street signs. So I think Little Vintage Me 64 was here earlier. Um, so here you've got, you know, the Einbahn, uh, everything's in meters. You've got, you know, so it's, you, it plays the same way as dominoes, but instead of numbers, you're dealing in pips, you're dealing with street signs. So I think you can still play it even though one, one tile is missing. So it's the, you, you have fun with that one. <laughs> Your helper is not here. Go ahead, Katie. What's it say? Let's see, uh, Ver Verker Shine, Shining. Shine, shine, shine eggs in. <laughs> All together now. Okay, so you've got the dominoes, the deck of cards, grapple, puzzle, password, and pokino. So one, two, three, four, five, six games all in the lot for 20 bucks. So $20 for the stack of games, 20 bucks. Uh, and I picked the games that will fit in a 12 by 12 box. So they'll be able to go in a priority mailbox without it being oversized or anything like that. And probably the heaviest one's the Pokino one, but it's not a super heavy stack. The puzzle weighs almost nothing. So 20 bucks for the stack of games, puzzle, and cards, number 97. $20, number 97 for the stack of games. I played a lot of Password growing up, so that brings back memories. Yeah, Password I actually had in my booth once before, and I think it survived. Like it did sell. And I just hope that whoever bought it, like it still had all the pieces to it because it did when I put it in there, but who knows? Um, so it looks like we had to take her to 997. Yes, Linda Clark, I see, gets number 97. That's a great lot, Linda. Thank you so much, Linda. All right. Next one, let's move into some glass because, you know, I love shipping things that'll break. This was a fun one to research because it caught me off guard. So I'm going to show you really quick. So what it is, it is a, a covered jar with matchsticks in it. Okay, or mat matchbooks in it. So that was what I thought was pretty cool about it. I specifically went looking for a container to put the cards in. So what I found interesting is this. All around the bottom, there are slits down here, a third of the way around, all the way around the bottom and i'm like well did this sit in a stand of some sort i had to kind of figure out so i was doing some research and i got lucky because i don't know if you'll be able to see it there actually is a stamp on the bottom of the glass and what it says is shot s-c-h-o-t-t -T, mains m-a-i-n-z so I don't know if we still got little little vintage Diana, little vintage Diana. Sorry, little vintage me, uh, sixty four Diana uh, from Germany. Um, it is German glass, and Katie, you might know the German glass that it, that what they made or what it, what it was known here in the states. I don't know the name of it, but I have seen it before. So it's Jenna glass, the J E N A. So Jenna glass, and what it turned out is that what I have here is a marriage. I think, like I literally couldn't figure it all out, but I'm pretty sure this is a marriage because what this is, and the reason there's these um, slots, these slits in here, this has, and you can kind of see it, there's a, a ridge here. This is a teapot warmer. So there's a glass teapot, also Mark Shot mains, that's Jenna Glass. It's an all glass teapot that sits in here. There's a little platform, one of those, one of the matches goes flying. There's a little platform down here of that recess that would hold the votive candle. So when you set the teapot on top of here, there is no airflow at the top. So the only way the flame could get air was through these slits in the bottom. Wow. So what I couldn't figure out is then, well, what's this? So from what I can tell, like some of the teapots had lids, but they didn't have lids this big. Um, there were a couple of like they were sugar bowls that Jenna made, but also not with a lid like this. I I'm not sure if this this lid is not marked, so this may not be a Jenna glass lid. It just fits, so it's a super cool looking piece. Whether you just want the glass dish, you don't even care about the matchbooks, and if you don't care about the matchbooks, let me know because I have to ship this ground. I cannot ship this priority mail because I can't ship matches. 
uh, in the air. So if you want this and you don't want the matches, you might as well, I might as well take them out because then you'll get the package faster. So just let me know. Um, so anyway, I was, I was selling it as a decorative piece to hold some pretty cool match matchbooks because we've got, you know, some of them are just, you know, corporate ones, TW services. Uh, we've got some architectural ones on here from Seymour, um, comfort, convenience, We've got a, a prairie prairie winds hotel so you know you can have an affair um so anyway it's just a cool set of vintage matchbox or match i keep wanting to say matchbox i got matchbox coming up too um matchbooks in the glass jenna glass jar and now i will say the warmer with the teapots those are selling for like 100 bucks i only have the warmer and nothing else you do what you want, if you want. i'm just selling it for 10 bucks i got a good price on it so i'm selling it as a decorative item for 10 bucks $10, number 32, $10 gives you the Jenna glass with the air flow with all the matchbooks and the cover, whether it's a marriage or not. I love the matchbooks. I think uh, a collection of those in a jar is just so cool. Yeah, I agree. I thought they were, and they looked just, I was trying, I used to have them just like sitting in a bowl that you could buy them loose. They weren't really selling well. And then I started putting them in like ball jars and just decorative jars. And then they started selling because people just needed a way to show them off. And so I'm like more than happy to do that. So this is the biggest one that I had at my booth. And so this is, this is the $10 one. The other ones I have were smaller. So it looks like number 32. It goes to Michelle Ann. So congratulations, Michelle Ann. And I see people in the chat talking about uh, splitting up the games. Uh, so if you uh, and Linda Clark, the winner of the games, decides to uh, you know, split off different pieces, just make sure that you do email Patrick with your address and all of that so that things can get taken care of that way. Thank you, Kylie. I hope people notice when I do that. I don't think everyone always appreciates it. I've gotten, I've literally got messages from people saying, shut up, just sell. Um, that's not why I'm here. So <laughs> I hope I educated, you know, gave you something to think about. Um, so I appreciate it. Uh, and also if for anyone who didn't see that live sale for the games, if you just go into my history, you'll find it on YouTube. There's probably five or six games that have not sold um, that I haven't even tried to list. And Michelle does want the matchbook. So thank you, Michelle. Uh, I will make a note on that. Um, so if you go into the video and you see some of those other games, that Avante one is a really cool looking game. Um, if there's any that you want, just you know, send me a quick note and we can work something out. Uh, and that goes for any of the haul videos, anything that I show, if you know, knock yourself out, make me an offer. Um, so thank you. Thank you, Christy. You're here to learn, and thank you, Halem. Oh, everyone's making me feel 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 love, love. We're loving the research, which I agree. I, I love learning from you, Patrick. To me, it's got to be more. I mean, I want to put something out into the vintage community, and yes, I obviously get a benefit selling these items, but that's why my sales. I don't try and crank hundred items out. You know, at first I couldn't handle shipping hundred items. My God, the people that do that, I bless you, but I could never do that. Um, and it's just like I, I want to do this. I want to have fun. I want to care about what I'm selling and. Um, I've got, and I've learned a lesson. There's stuff that I still haven't listed because I bought it one time because like, oh, it's a really good deal and I'll make money on it. I don't even want to take a picture of it. I've got to literally have a batch of fishing rods that, I, that and they're modern. I'm like, why did I buy these? I have a pair of, my daughter was cleaning up. She's like, why do you have a pair of women's rubber boots? I'm like, I have no idea. It's because I was trying to find something to sell on eBay and those are just still sitting in the garage. Uh, so anyway, so the next item is... I didn't, I guess I'm kind of picking up my sin, my sin stack. So these I picked up to be perfectly honest. Hi, Nita May. Uh, oh, hey, little vintage me. We, I, I didn't see you respond. So we were talking about you. Uh, so these are thin um, cigar tins. Now I picked these up to do more than just sell them as tins. I do think they're kind of cool. Okay. You know, they're very graphic. They're very lightweight, um, you know, lightweight, lightweight tin or aluminum. But what my intention had been Oh, look, it's layman's. I forgot that that was in there. My intention had been, and I wanted to find um, post-it notes that are the rectangular size and put adhesive or a magnet on the back to get this to stay in and then do like a little holder to hold a pencil. And it would be like a little notebook case. Oh, how cool. If you've seen any of my videos, I'm, I don't do projects. 
I have great ideas for projects. I never follow through. So this is literally been sitting in a box waiting for me to figure out how to do the magnetic post-it notes and the holder of a pencil. So you know what? I'm trying to clear make space. So these don't take up much space, but I'm going to pass them on. So either they're just decorative pieces or this to me is something that would totally fit in your handbag. And it would just be a cool way to have your business cards, to have your know, note cards, put a little pen or something in there. And it's just kind of a little, a cool little container. So these are both Macanudo, Montego, Isia, Mad uh, so this one is Maduro, and this one is Ascots. So these are very, these are cigars, but these are the very thin cigars. So you've got a pair of these, um, a pair of these uh, tin. And yes, of course, we were talking good about you, Diana. We were talking about Germany. Uh, you could have translated one of our items, but you got a pair of cigar boxes, whatever you want to do with them for four bucks. So two bucks a box, $4 for the pair of boxes by giving me number 61, 61, $4 for both of the boxes. And I just got my dad some Macanudo cigars for Christmas. He oh, really? Macanudo, so do, are they all, is Macanudo, is that, is that design define the small size or is that just a style, a style? Is that the tobacco? I know nothing. Yeah, Macanudo is a brand of cigars, so they they make all different uh, sizes of cigars, and they have oh the, okay the the robust ones, the thicker style, as well as the slims. So the Maduro and the Ascots, the boxes are the same. So the Ascot just must be another small small yeah, size. There would be different tobacco. Flavors. Okay. So different ones are you know they have the different names like Hyde, so on and so forth. And it looks like we had a bunch of people looking for 61. Lots of people. And Brooke Lagan, congratulations, you got it. Hey, Brooke. So Brooke at the archive is picking that up. So thank you uh, so much, Brooke, for picking up the tins. All right. Next one was on the, I think this is the last video I did. This was a live haul video where Katie joined me. And I had picked this up actually with Katie in mind. It is a vintage brooch. It has this metal, like, I don't even know how to, how, how would you describe that? Would, it's like not mesh. What would you say that is? Mesh, but it's like a flexible wire. Yeah, it is flexible. And you can kind of see it's like, it's kind of oh. twisted upon itself. And it does kind of collapse down and have a little bit of give front to back. I mean, it's, it's really, I don't think it's supposed to do anything. It's not en tremblant or anything like that. It's just the way the... It just has a little bit of flex. Uh, it's got the gold gold filled rose there in the middle. It has the safety clasp on the back. From what I could tell, this is not marked. It's just a cool vintage brooch. I think we had a couple different votes on this. I had felt it was 50s. A couple people felt it pushed into third into 60s. Um, I'd say 50s or 60s for sure. And I think I've got a question. This is a 1920 vertical grand piano. So it's not an upright, it is a vertical grand. The harp actually goes all the way up to here. It's the same size harp as a baby grand piano. And it is tiger oak is the, uh, the, was the wood on here. So thank you for joining us, Mama's Treasures, and thanks for asking the question. And uh, yeah, and Katie, just shout out if questions like that come in, I'm more than happy to answer. Uh, anyway, so the uh, 50s, 60s brooch, very cool, excellent condition. It's $9. So $9 for the little vintage brooch, number 31. $9, number 31 for the little gold filled brooch. That is beautiful. And I'm so sorry about Louie. She's having a moment of total excitement. <laughs> nah, Louie's always welcome. She just wants to be part of the action. And lots of people are loving the brooch in the chat. Always looking for Nate's confirmation. to see Excellent. How did you come up with, how did Louie get Louie's name as being a girl? I always want to call him a boy. So actually I had planned to be uh, getting a boy pug and it didn't work out. And I ended up with a girl sort of by accident. And I love the name Louie because I love all things England and British. So she's actually Louie Piccadilly. Yeah. Circus. So Louie Piccadilly Blaylock. So she's got the 
the British influence there. <laughs> awesome. And I see that brooch goes to Maggie Sue. So congratulations, Maggie Sue. Maggie Sue. Maggie Sue. Okay. Um, I'm sure you get that all your all your life, Maggie Sue. So I apologize. Uh, thank you very much, Maggie Sue. I do not believe you purchased from me before unless you've changed your name. Uh, regardless, let, just drop me an email to that email address with your shipping information and I'll get you an invoice. All right. The next item goes, I don't know if this would necessarily fall into your industrial look, um, it, but it falls into the area of I'm not going to clean it. It is another piece of silver plate. This is Mexican silver. It is Nambe, N-A-M-B-E. It's a, I, I don't know, I guess it's a brand of silver. I knew Nambe as a jewelry um, maker. And if you go, I used to travel out of the BWI airport in Baltimore and they actually had a booth of Nambe jewelry, not, not like dishes like this. So I don't know how old this piece is. This uh, last graced the stage of Jekyll and Hyde, the musical. Uh, this was in uh, Dr. Jekyll's, uh, on his workbench. It is just a cool silver piece of silver, silver plate, probably. I can't imagine Nambe is solid silver, or it might just be a, lo a lower quality of silver, but you can see it definitely has a great patina uh, going into it. Uh, and again, and I'm not sure if that 627 is the parts of silver, um, like 925 is sterling. And I don't know, like if this is just lower than coin silver, admittedly, I don't, I don't know Nambe very well. Um, so it's just a simple silver plated dish with the Nambe brand, even if you don't know it or care, it is a cool shape because it's almost like a mid-century modern. It's got that little, that little thing going into it and it sits flat and that's what it looks like. And it's five bucks. So five bucks for the silver plate. $5 for number 80, $5 number 80 for the Nambe dish. See people comparing their nationalities. I just got my ancestry.com DNA kit. I haven't submitted it yet. So I'm going to try and figure out, figure out what I am because no yeah, one knows. I'm, <laughs> I'm part Welsh and uh, I'm part uh, German. So we've got some interesting influences in our family. We've been able to chase, chase back a couple different branches of my family as far back as the, one branch went back to the 15th century and one back went to the 16th century. And we had one dip into France, but all the rest were either England, Ireland, and Scotland or Germany and Switzerland. That was it. Like literally we have no other diversity. <laughs> it's like, okay, we are European. So we shall see if then I, what the DNA comes back with, because, okay, that's what I find on paper. But in some cases, it's like, it's just because somebody else had found this, this train, you know, this, this trail. I'm curious if anything comes back because when I was growing up, we had Cherokee princess blood as almost everyone does. So, you know, I was told we, my parents literally wanted to apply for a minority scholarship for me to go to college. And I'm like, where did we think this happened? And it's because the name are one of the names in our family tree is Golightly they decided that was a Native American name. Okay, first of all, have you ever seen Breakfast at Tiffany's? Uh, and it turns out Golightly is the, is the branch that came from Scotland. So no Cherokee princess, but anyway. I see. Do we have any takers on number 80? Yes, number 80 goes to Lois Hoover. And I, I do want to thank Maggie Sue. She bought that brooch for me. So thank you so much, Maggie. Oh. So sweet. Nice. Thank you. Thank you, Maggie Sue. That's sweet of you. All right. Admittedly, odd item coming up here. It's one of those, again, I thought I could do a project or I'd do something fun with it. Turned out they just sat in a, in a bowl. And admittedly, they looked really cool sitting in the bowl. So I highly recommend that. This is a set of bowling patches. And this just spoke to me because growing up, I was a bowler. I did not do sports in any way, shape or form bowling was as active as I got, which would be why I was always a fat kid. Um, so we've got, these are all, uh, some of them are dated. This one is not. So we've got a bowling achievement patch, fairly large. We've got a 1969, 1970, I beat the champion Chicago Sun-Times contest. You can see the bowling ball with the bowling pins. We've got a 1965, 1966, I beat the champion, also from the Chicago Sun-Times. We've got a 1975-76, I beat the champion, Chicago sometimes, bowling. We've got a 
I beat the champion. We see a trend. And those were all the I beat the champ. Oh, no, I've got one more, 67 and 68. So there were no duplicates. These are all different uh, I beat the champion sometimes. We also have an ABC Century Club 100 over average, which I didn't even know was a thing. So you've got this cool triangle, triangular um, uh, patch, ABC, American Bowling Club, Coalition, Click. I have no idea what ABC stands for. I have a feeling it's not Click. So ABC. And then, oh, wait, I had one more. I had the, another I Beat the Champion. This was 62. So the I Beat the Champions ran from 62 to 70, I think it was. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there are eight bowling patches. Again, put these in a small dish on your coffee table. They are quite the conversation talker, considering a lot of you probably weren't born during any of this. Um, so we've got a series of bowling patches, eight of them for 12 bucks. So $1.50 a patch. $1.50 per patch for eight bowling patches, no duplicates, $12. Give me number 43. $12.43 for the stacko patcho. Those are so cool. And I think they would be really neat on a jean jacket. Of them. Absolutely. I originally wanted to like find an old duffel bag or something to sew these onto. That was my intention when I got them. And yeah, they just sat in a bowl. <laughs> so. very, very cool. My grandfather was in a bowling league and he was quite good. So we went bowling all the time growing up. I miss going to the, the bowling alleys. We just don't have a lot of them anymore here. Yeah, that's true. So it looks like no takers on the bowling patches. So those will stick, stick up there. Uh, previously on, um, one of my live sales I actually did a couple of times. I had an opportunity to pick up a pat, a batch of postcards and I sold them as part of trustee's bargain bin. Uh, this one I did a, uh, I, I still has couple, se several left. So I just made a little batch. I don't know if these are still considered the large type or the large print. I know there's like different types of uh, postcards. So these all have like somewhat large letters, but not the ones that have the huge letters across. Do you know, Katie, like, does this qualify as the large type or the large text in in postcards? I don't know a lot about postcards, but I do believe that is considered the large text. I'm so I know there's different versions of it. So anyway, all four of these are part of a lot. They all are this style where you've got all of the photographs. So they're all in great condition. None of them have been mailed. These are all uncirculated. They're all probably from the 40s. One of them actually had a date, I think, written on there. Um, well, three of them. Yeah, I don't see the date. So we have one for Salt Lake City, the art folder of Salt Lake City, and then that's the back. We have the souvenir folder of Washington, Mount Vernon, and Arlington. Thought that was fun for the inauguration yesterday with the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier on the back. We've got the Palm Beaches. That was the one I showed you. That's the back of the Palm Beaches one. And then I pulled this one out because at the time I was prepping for the sale, Huckster Helper was on the Ohio Turnpike. So I found the Ohio Turnpike card and it is still a folder of photographs from the Ohio Turnpike, which you would think would be boring. You're right. But um, so you've got bridges. You've got a toll booth. Like everyone needs a postcard of a toll booth. Like I, my life was not complete until I had that. Um, and I don't know at what point the, the toll booth or the uh, turnpike went through the beach. So I think the photographer got lost. Um, but so we've got a beach photo. And we also have the uh, soapbox derby. Also, I hope that's not on the turnpike. So, you know, we just got some cool. And like I said, I pulled that one in because I felt it was timely. Um, the Oxter Helper has appeared or has arrived in um, Virginia. Or no, she's staying with friends tonight in um, either Ohio or Pennsylvania somewhere. And then heading to Virginia tomorrow. So anyway, she was on the turnpike. So we got a set of four. All of them are the, that style of the folder postcards. All four the set is $9. So $9 for the set of four of the folder style postcards, nine bucks for all four by giving me number 79. $9.79 for all four of the postcard sets. Even though the turnpike doesn't seem as interesting, those cars are really cool. Yeah, I just saw one of the comments about the cars. Like I didn't even think of that. That So this would have been, 
I don't think this one. I don't remember if I if I had a date if it had a date anywhere on it. And I didn't look to see when the turnpike itself was built. I would say fifties with the style of that car, but I could be wrong. Yeah, because there's a. Yeah, we're talking that. That'd be like a grease, grease lightning there. <laughs> Trying to find some others that have the cars. Yeah, the, those cars. That was like six. That looks sixties, actually. Sixties. And I would have said just from the look of the art, I would have guessed sixties. But nobody else liked the art, so seventy nine goes unsold. And Don is saying the turnpike was built in nineteen fifty five. Thank you, Don. All right. Next item is going back to some sin pieces. This is a um, Seagram's cocktail glass. It is what I liked about it is it's an international uh, theme. So you've got the, the flags of different nations on both sides, along with the Seagram's logo, the spirit of international competition. So you've got the different, the brand, and then their different individual products. Jameson is on there. I had this initially up on the shelf in my room where I have all my globes, um, but because it was clear and it was up really, really high, you couldn't really see the flags. So I decided to, you know, pull it down here, recycle it in the, the live sale, and it is a Seagram's cocktail glass for four bucks. Four dollars for the Seagram's cocktail glass by giving me number 76. 76, four bucks for Seagram's, what that, is that a low ball? It's a low ball glass. Double old fashioned? For, for probably scotch. Scotch, yeah. Great for flipping and sipping night. There you go. And it is, I mean, like I said, I got it because of the design. I don't necessarily have a, a huge affinity for Seagram's, but I, I love the international flags and it did look nice with my globes. You just couldn't see it. So I found something better um, that fit the space better. So this is out of my personal collection. Do we have any takers on that one? We do. I see Liz Sturman, number 76. Congratulations, Liz. That's awesome. Great. Thanks so much, Liz, for picking that up. All right. The next piece, lost the tag. Here we go. The next piece is if you, again, watch my channel, usually, I think this might be the first piece of pottery I've had so far. I usually have a lot. Well, we got the Takahashi. But this is a piece of Norlands. So I had the New Orleans uh, uh, decorative plate. Now I've got Norlean's uh, handmade in Italy. So you've got a gold foil. So it's not quite, it's not as old as the Japan stamp. This is a little bit newer with the made in Italy stamp, but it is a pottery, I, for lack of a better word, like a pedestal basket. So it's got like the basket handle on the top, but then it kind of comes down and then has a footed pedestal base. Um, it is not glazed on the inside. So I do not believe you could use this as a planter. You could use it for an air plant, but I don't think you'd want to have a lot of moisture on the inside. But the decoration is very cool. It's got this red and white floral motif that's been painted over the dark brown glazing, highlighting the pottery itself. It's just a really neat, like rustic piece from this side that was then prettified with the flowers on that side. So depending on what you like, you can actually display it without the flowers, or if you want to put it with your spring basket or your spring displays, you can make a vignette and you've got the pretty uh, white and pink florals on the front. So again, it's a Norlean's made in Italy, a uh, vintage piece, and it's in great condition, no chips, no cracks. It's $8, $8 for the Norlean's Italy basket, $8 by giving me number 15, $8, number 15 for the Norlean's basket. That is beautiful, Patrick. Yeah, I liked that a lot. I always like pottery, and I have to be really careful what I buy to keep versus what I buy to sell on. So I have to like make myself sell things. That's my problem with advertising tins. I want them all. <laughs> I'm really at the point where I want to do quality over quantity. So in some way, like, I've slowly been replacing my 19th century stoneware because some of the pieces I have are not that old or they don't, they're not as well marked. 
Um, so it's like, you know what, I don't, I don't want to just like clutter it. I want to have just, you know, some nice pieces. So you have to pick and choose. And this is a great piece, but not necessarily the style of decor that I would put in. And I see number 15, that beautiful pottery piece is going to Jewel T. Excellent. Thanks again, Jewel T for picking that up. All right. Uh, another, I, did you say that one? That's Louie. Oh, hi, Louie. Okay, so the next one, this also was in the live video that I did with um, Katie. This is, if I can actually pick them up, this is another piece of jewelry. These are cufflinks. So if you've got any men in the house or you're buying for men, or if you as a lady like French cuffs, uh, these can be, you know, they can just go into a regular, if you've got a, you know, boutonniere price, you can put it on there, but they are designed as, uh, front as cufflinks. So you've got the style cufflink with the toggle on it. So you slide that in between the two sets of, well, you'd actually have four buttons. This would go all the way through and then you pop it out. And so it locks your buttons in place and you've got that decorative piece sticking out uh, from your French cuff. So tuxedos, things like that. Um, it is a perfect pair, I would say, based on that design. What do you think, Katie? I would say that's like 40s, 50s. Yeah, I would say that's a little mid-century modern looking. In it. Yeah, it's got that little like part that kind of sticks up from the top. So you've got the the polyhedron, whatever, but then you've also got the little accent thing at the top too. It's a, I think it's a black stone. Is that? Although, okay. I'm wondering if it's like a really, really dark blue. It looks black on my end. Yeah, let me see if I can get a light on it. Yeah, I think it's black. So you've got a very dark stone regardless. Um, and anyway, it's a pair of cufflinks. It's very cool. This would also look great. I don't know if it's onyx. It's a very, very well polished stone and it is, or, and it might just be glass. And if you look, you've got the prongs on there. You can see it's actually round all the way so that it's a round ball sitting in the prongs. You've got air in between those prongs. So I, I think this, the, the sphere was made first like, like a pearl and then put into the prongs. I do think though, it's just glass. I don't think it's stone. It feels too smooth to be stone. And I'm not even sure it's glass if, or it could, you know, who knows, it could be plastic. Admittedly, I do not know. It's gold tone, it is not gold. Um, so it's a good idea that it's onyx because that would match the era, but I can't swear to it. But even if you put it into a, a junk uh, jar, these would just give you some bling into a junk jar, whether you wear them or not. They're only five bucks. So $5 for the mid-century modern uh, cufflinks, $5 by giving me number 92. $5, 92 for the pair O cufflinks. Those are just gorgeous. All right. We've got, uh, got, a, got a taker on that one? Yes, I see Karen Gondelinger. You're picking up those gorgeous mid-century modern cufflinks. I hope you do something wonderful with them. Uh, definitely enjoy those, Karen. Thanks for picking those up. All right. The next piece is going definitely uh, industrial. Um, this is a piece that I did not want to put in my booth because I was afraid it would walk away. It is not a skeleton key. It is, what is it, Katie? And that would be an Allen wrench. Is it a clock key? But you would use it, yes. Yes. <laughs> like, don't be getting all modern and technical on me there, Katie. I was counting on you. So, yeah. So, our industrial knowledge it gives us this is actually a clock winding key. So, it is an Allen wrench because yeah. I thought a clock winding key had a hole in the middle of it. But I was assuming that that's what this was for. Do you agree, Katie? I would agree for a clock. I've also seen some people use those uh, for the back of like small toys or sometimes fireplaces. But yeah, that would be for a clock. I'm thinking my woodworker. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, man, push comes to shove. You can do the Allen wrench. You know, you, you use that. Like, wait, what, is that the right size? Um, so, it's you know, we're doing total industrial. It's just a cool little piece. Um, I had some skeleton keys in my booth. Uh, this I just did not want to put in my booth. Um, but I am selling it uh, for the same price I sold the skeleton keys for because uh, it's just a different purpose and it's only four bucks. 
So $4 for the little vintage industrial uh, clock key slash Allen wrench um, that will weigh practically nothing. So it definitely would go first class or if you're getting anything else, it would basically ship for free. So $4 for the little clock key for giving me number 55. $4, number 55 for the clock key. That is really neat. Yes, the wine clocks. <laughs> All right. Next one was in, I can't remember I did this in the live sale with you, Katie. I think I did. Um, or not the live sale, the live haul. Live. This, so this was, a I, what I when I picked it up, this is what I thought was another lacquer, Russian lacquer box. I got other Russian lacquer boxes. As I started photographing it and getting ready, I saw a scuff. It, it felt a little different. So I was like, well, maybe it's more modern. But then I suddenly saw that little scuff. And what I discover is I believe this is actually enamel over copper. This is metal. And I didn't realize that when I bought it. So it's not a lacquer box, but I do believe it is lac it is Russian all the same. Because I got it the same place that I got all of the lacquer boxes. So I don't know if that makes it more modern. It did have a signature on the florals that looked like an FAB. I sent it to Greg at Black at Blue Feather Mercantile to see if he recognized it or if it was in the Cyrillic alphabet. Um, he didn't he didn't know either and I can't quite get it to show up on the screen. But anyway, there's this very small three character uh, signature. It's just a small trinket box. It's got the glazed red in the middle or in on the inside. It's in very good condition. It does have the little place, which is all the way on the bottom. It does have that little scuff, which is where I started thinking, wait, this isn't lacquer anymore um, other than, you know, the sound. So it's just a cool little box. So you've got a, Ru the, a Russian designed enamel over copper trinket box for eight bucks. So $8 for the trinket box by giving me number 34. $8.34 for the little lacquer or the little, what I thought was a lacquer box. And I see number 55, the fabulous clock key is going to Nancy at the Sober Stuff's house. And she actually needs one for a clock that she has. So that's very fitting, Patrick. Excellent. Well, I'm glad to help you out, Nancy. And that lacquer box is just a piece. And I see Sandy at Four Sandy's Lilacs is picking that up. All right. All right. Again, if you follow me on Instagram, you would have seen this um, posted. This is, this, uh, I thought, a fun item that I wanted to sell on the sale. And you get the, get the light to hit it there. You can see it is from the Concorde. So it's got the silhouette of the Concorde airplane above it, the word Concorde. And then at the very bottom, you can see from the time when it was operated by British Airways. So I can't remember. I should have looked up. I can't remember when... Uh, the, when the Concorde was grounded. Uh, some of us may remember it was grounded when it, uh, during takeoff, it ran over a piece of metal that shot into the gas tank and it exploded on to, on um, as it was taking off. That was the last flight of the Con like, flight of the Concords. I did not mean to make a joke out of that. I just, that is the last time the Concorde uh, traveled and then it's been banned. It no longer travels. So this is definitely an era. I want to say that was in the 2000s. Like, so I don't think that was 20 years ago, 2003. Thank you, Don. So very early 2000s. So we're not quite at the 20 year vintage, but it's still amazing. Not many people could fly the Concorde just because even back then it cost a fortune. Um, so I don't think a lot of these pieces necessarily were out there. Uh, so what this is, is a little notebook that you would have gotten for flying the Concorde. Every seat was business class or first class because it cost like $12,000. There's a little pencil in the notebook that actually fits right into the spine. So it comes right out. Unfortunately, the pencil is not marked Concorde, unfortunately, but it is definitely color coded. And it definitely fits nicely. So it is the original and it was used. So it's a notebook where you can see in the middle, some of the pages were taken. So this is really more of a conversation piece. And it is a one-time use. I don't really see a way once the paper runs out to replace it. Like this isn't a cover. This was literally a bound set of papers with a perforated edge to make your notes. So I guess they figured you'd travel with them again and you'd get another one. So anyway, I just thought this was kind of cool. Picked it up, got it at a pretty decent price. I just thought it was a fun and pretty unique item. I'd never seen anything like that. Um, so I'm selling it here for eight bucks. 
So $8 for the little Concord notebook with its matching pencil and half the paper. $8, number 33. $8.33 for the Concord notebook. I love pieces like that. I have a couple of Delta Airlines uh, traveling pieces that were given the first class passengers. I just think that is so cool. Absolutely. I, I had the opportunity in a previous life to travel internationally and my company would travel. Anytime I flew over international waters, I got to fly business class. So I actually accumulated some you know, business class and occasionally first class um, gifts. Uh, and it's one of those like, okay, I could get used to this, but I can't afford to buy this on my own. Um, my I, This was back in Amelia, our Huckster Helper had just been born. So this would have been like 1999, maybe 2000. And I still remember I the only time I've ever been to Australia, I flew to Melbourne. Uh, Australia business class. And in 1999, that ticket was like $11,000. And I thought it was insane. I'm like, wait a minute, just give me a raise. Let me let me fly, fly uh, coach and give me the cash. I do not want to spend that much money. And they're like, nope, but they, so I flew business class to Melbourne. Um, okay. Do we have any takers on it? Yes. Nettie gets number 33. Congrats. Nettie. Thank you, Jeanette, for picking that up. All right, going from red notebook to red swizzle sticks. So again, I've been doing swizzle sticks off and on in some of my sales and had to start getting, getting a low. So I started theming up what I've got left and this became the red batch. So I've got an Anthony's lobster uh, swizzle stick. I've got Sergeant Preston's uh, swizzle stick. I'm assuming that's like a restaurant or a bar. I originally thought that was the McDonald's Golden Arches, but it's not. I don't know what that symbol is. This is like the coolest one I've ever had. It is a dragon um, swizzle stick. Oh, that's um, and it looks like, unfortunately, if you look really closely, his tail is blunted. So I think he may have had more of a curve that got snapped off. I, you know, I don't know for sure. Um, but I think the fact that it's flat like that, I'm not sure if that should be a little bit longer. So... He probably is not, I don't, I don't know if he's in pristine condition, but at a glance, he does look cool. So I included him. Got a little Ramada in dude with a top hat. We've got the Crow's Nest, Johnson City, Tennessee. So it's just a standard one, but it's got its name for the Crow's Nest in Tennessee. We've got any uh, volunteers, at the volunteer state. Um, we've got the Victorian room with like a little pizza paddle. I don't know if at one time that had ink on it. I'm assuming it did, but right now it's just barely got any... Uh, any ink left on it. And then you also have the football one for the fifth quarter in Richmond, Indiana. So you got a little football helmet. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You have seven all red tool sticks for five bucks. Seven dollars, five bucks. So under a dollar each, five bucks for all seven. And you get those by giving me number 51. 51, five bucks for the set of seven, including the cool dragon. Oh my goodness, Louie is going nuts. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, we love Louie. Dragon. I'm wondering how many other people have dogs and their dogs are now going crazy because Louie's going crazy. Probably. They're all saying hello to each other. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, that dragon, man, I have never seen one like that. I know. And it does have a name on it. Um, I think it's international because it says the dragon room, Auburn W N. And I meant to look that one up. I don't know what that would be. It was the dragon room Wong's Mandarin Auburn and comma W N period. So that's not a state W N wouldn't be a state. So I don't know what that would be. Um, it was made in Canada, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the restaurant was in Canada because is there a territory? Hey, Teofane is still here. Is there a territory or Joni? Is there like a West WN territory in Canada? Maybe there is. I don't know. I've never, there's one, there's something with a W isn't there. No, Saskatchewan, mm. Manitoba. I, oh, I'm going to fail this quiz. Anyway, um, I think we had some takers on that one. Yeah. And Logan at the Ventique Scavenger gets that one. Congratulations, Logan. You're going to love that. I'm sorry. Who is it? Who got it again? Logan, the Ventique Scavenger. 
And Logan, I just adore your name. I think that is so clever. So somebody just put a note, which I've never heard, that Washington State used to be abbreviated WN. Wow, I did not know that, Tricia. I, I mean, I guess there is an N somewhere in that word, but I did not know that. So, okay, so WNs. Oh, Winnipeg was the one I was trying to come up with. Thank you, okay. uh, Jamie. Um, I, I thought there was something in Canada with a W, but I couldn't, couldn't find it. Um, so, yes, and so 51 goes to the Vintique Scavenger. I think you're new to me, uh, Logan. So again, just make sure anyone who's buying me from me for the first time, please just make sure you send me an email with your shipping information so I can send you a uh, send you the invoice with shipping. And hey, Debbie uh, from our Vagabond Travels. She's also doing live sales, so make sure you catch hers. And oh, my vintage, Kim is here. Um, oops, wrong one. Uh, Kim is here. So she has just started doing live sales. She did her first one on Tuesday, but also subscribe to Kim at Oh My Vintage on YouTube because she is doing... Uh, the op the unboxing videos for the 30 plus mystery boxes that she won during the Just One More Dachshund Rescue fundraiser. So 30, almost 35, or she might've ended up getting 35 uh, mystery boxes. So far, I think she's only opened 15. So it's still, still more to come. So definitely be checking out uh, Diana's. Hope your sale went well, Diana. And uh, thanks for uh, joining in um, the sale. Okay, so 51, Swizzle Stick a lot. All right, so the next one, is a continuation I had uh, early uh, earlier. I ended up doing a sale of some toys and games. These got missed when I had set them uh, when I set it up. Uh, so this was on my Instagram feed uh, today. It is a set of Matchbox toys. When I kept saying Matchbook earlier, I was saying Matchbox. This is why these were on the mind. These are not Hot Wheels. These are Matchbox. So I've got the horse trailer that I believe is missing the tray the door. I'm assuming that would have had a door on it. So this one is Matchbox. It's got the Matchbox name on the bottom. This one does have the door, and it also has a cool stickers on it with a little horse silhouette, and it still has the plastic in the windows on that one, and it's got a sunroof. And then the last one is from, it's marked Honda, and it was the Honda motorcycle trailer. So I was thinking this was like maybe for a jet ski or something, but this is a, a it says on the bottom, it's a cycle trailer. So these three um, matchbook pieces, the three, basically three trailers, you got the cycle trailer and the two horse trailers. You get the batch for six bucks. So $6 for the three um, uh, matchbox toys, $6 by giving me number 91, $6.91 uh, for the sun roofed um, toys. Those will be really great in someone's display. Oh, a lot of people collect those metal now. Yeah, these are solid metal. I mean, I should go without saying. I don't remember if they were dated, um, but these would these were mine and my brother. So these would have dated to like late sixties, seventies. That's what Nancy's saying. She says the cycle trailer and the first horse trailer are vintage nineteen seventies. Yeah, that would that would make sense. Um, the one with the silhouette says it's the Pony Trailer Matchbox Series Lesney England. Actually, they all say Lesney England, but that one's the only one. That, that one says Pony Trailer. So, all metal. I don't see any takers so far on Matchbox. Okay. Yeah, basically, no one wants to buy their grandkids or kids toys that will kill them. But I survived. I all like right. Vintage toys. You wonder about the. The safety of the how did we all make it? <laughs> so many people survive with a real stove. <laughs> yeah. Do we have a last minute taker? No. Yes, we did. Oh yes, we did. Don Schwarzweiler. All right, Don, you got Thank it. Thank you, Don. Sorry, I don't have a dog trailer for you, but you 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 can pretend. Put all your little puppies in there. Um. All right. So the next piece. This was also covered in. Okay, this was like one of my smallest sales and it's taking me forever. I apologize, but I appreciate all you guys hanging out with me. This has, been, this has actually been one of my more fun sales, I think. Um, I've been having fun. Um, so this was also, I think this was in the live hall. This was, I think there was the live hall that you helped me with, Katie. Yes. Um, this is Irish pottery. So it was one that admittedly at the time I bought it, I was not familiar with it. So it's Nicholas Mossa, M-O-S-S-E, pottery made in Ireland. I did find examples of this um, pattern. It's called the old rose pattern. 
Uh, I could not tell how old these pieces were. Some of them still seem to be being sold in like boutiques in Ireland as if they were new. So I don't know if they're still being produced. Uh, and we, we had some debate on the live, on the video, what it was. The only place I found this shape, they called it a ramekin. And as Katie, you know, very correctly pointed out, I'm not sure you'd actually be able to cook this. You know, usually a ramekin would actually, you know, you put in the oven. So it's not glazed on the bottom. It is fully glazed in the middle. So I don't know if you guys are familiar with this, or this shape. The closest other thing we came up with was they had one without the foot on it that they were calling a salt, that that might've been the individual salt. And this one, because it's bigger, maybe it was the master salt. I was trained that master that salts typically didn't have a design at the bottom, but I don't know if that's a rule or if that's just usually. Um, usually if it has the thing at the bottom, it'd be a nut cup, but I don't think that's what this is. So anyway, it is just a very cool decorative piece. It can just be a little pin dish. You could put change in there um, or, you know, add it to your salt cellar collection because it's only five bucks. So $5 for the made in Ireland. Again, Nicholas, and I don't know, I don't know. I, I family came from Ireland, but I don't know how you're supposed to, how do you pronounce that, Katie? M-O-S-S-E. What's the Irish pronunciation of that? Mossy. Would, it be, would you pronounce the E so mossy, mossy? I'm not sure. And my friend, my best friend is Irish and I should know. Yeah. I, thought, I mean, to me, that's not a very Irish name, Nicholas Mossy. Um, but it's made in Ireland and it's only $5. So $5 for the ramekin slash master salt or whatever you want to do with it. Number 74, $5, 74 for the old rose pattern. That part I know, the old rose pattern, mossy pottery, number 74, five bucks. Nancy saying that some ramekins can be used and are used in a hot water bath, which makes sense. Oh, okay. That would definitely, yeah, I would say that that would be, that would not be very harsh on it. I mean, I think you might be able to bake on it. Like if you put it on a cookie sheet or something, maybe. Yeah, um, but it's like you also hate to test it and it like explodes. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't take the risk for something that beautiful. But I see that Nan, uh, Reclaimed Treasures by Mary, it's number 74. Congrats, Mary. That's really great in your collection. Thank you so much, Mary, for picking that up. All right. This is, again, goes into my world of theater. This is a really weird one. And so I'll just tell you right now it's $2. Um, because what this is, is for those of you who've, pay, who've been paying attention, uh, because of the current pandemic, uh, on two separate occasions, a, a production of Anti-Mame that I was supposed to direct has been canceled. And so I had accumulated several uh, props and costumes for it, some of which were still in my own personal ownership. This being one of them. If you know Auntie Mame, she ends up uh, selling roller skates. That's how she meets her future husband, spoiler alert. Um, I picked these up in the estate sale where I picked up everything else. They had them, I threw them in a the box. They were, it was, I basically didn't pay anything for them because I just threw them in a box and paid a flat fee for the box. What I did not know, is they don't match. So for some reason, this family had a pair of roller skates that was not a pair. So they're just really old roller skates. Now I will try and put one at a time because this one is semi-functional. Um, this one has the adjustable length. You can see the nut and bolt on there. So you can slide that up and down to make this a little bit longer or shorter. And it still has the leather strap to be able to strap this to your ankle. So you'd wear your full shoe would sit on there. You can see there's these little braces at the front. So that's supposed to hold on to your shoe, like keep you from sliding forward. And then you strap this on. So you have a roller skate. The other one is the same style. It's a little bit smaller, but what's problem with it is there's still the bolt to make them bigger and smaller, but I don't know if it's been broken or something. Cause it doesn't look like it's broken, but when this slides on, there's, there's, it doesn't lock in. So this would definitely, I, not that any of you are going to be using these to go roller skating. This is totally poor display. Um, but this one is like the less functional of the two. Uh, and also is a little bit, it, it's, it's, expand, it's expanded to its full length and it's significantly shorter than this one. So this might be a child's and this is definitely an adult's because this is probably set for maybe even bigger than my shoe size. So like I said, if they're a weird pair if you go industrial, you can't be more industrial than this. Um, they both have their straps. They just, they would be a great conversation piece. Um, and like I said, the pair of them is $2. So 
So two bucks for the pair of skates. Now, admittedly, they're probably the two of them together. I'm sure they're over a pound. So just keep that in mind. Um, but they're only two bucks. So if you have a place for that, put them in a bowl. Who knows? You get two bucks and it's number 78. So $2.78 for the pair of roller skates that aren't really a pair. Wow, well, I can't imagine uh, doing some roller skating with those. That must have been like those Raiders scooters. Like, and you back yourself on the shin and it would hurt so bad. <laughs> All right. And Looks like we might have some takers for that. Yes, I see Brooke Lagan picking those up. So congratulations, Brooke. Thank you, Brooke. Okay, so since we were talking, so those were for Auntie Mame, specifically for that one scene. Since I'm not going to do it, I just don't want to be reminded of the of a show that I can't produce, I can't do, direct anymore. The other one, though, is a really cool piece that I'm like, you know what? This is going into the live sale. And because it's a piece of clothing, I get to wear it. So because that has become evidently a thing on my sales. Um, so let me see if I can squeeze myself in here. I'm wearing pants for the sole purpose. Um, it is a cape. It is a vintage cape. Wow. So you've got a very large zipper. Now you can see there's a little bit of discoloration on the gold tone to the zipper. But it zips up. And I will be perfectly honest, it zips up like a man. Women's and my... I just covered my microphone, so let me pull that back out. So for those of you who do clothing or pay attention, men's zippers zipper zip on the opposite side of a woman. This actually zips with the zipper pull on the right, where if it were a woman's cape, it'd be on the left. This is clearly a woman's cape. Um, there are buttons on the bottom with these little tabs that then the buttons are on the inside. So you would button it down so you would actually have a closure all the way down. Check out this. I don't know if the, the color is not showing up very well. It is a chartreuse green satin lining. It is gorgeous. And the outside is a very dark green. I'm going to say wool. It is the armholes are oddly placed, but I'm not used to wearing a cape. So I don't know. Maybe this is normal, um, but they're very forward. So like, I can't, like my elbows are still against my sides and that's as far out as I can go. So I don't know if that's normal or whatever, but size wise, I am not a small person. And this is completely, you can see it fits me in the shoulders. This is designed for anybody to wear. Like this, this I think this is like a one size fits all. So again, you've got this ginormous pull. As my microphone was flying, sorry if that was loud. Let me put the microphone back on because I want to show you the tag because it is labeled. Now, I don't know clothing. I don't carry clothing, so I don't really necessarily know anything about like era and things like that. But so you've got Vogue Couturier design. <laughs> Louis either hates it or loves it. He so loves it. Vogue Couturier design. And then... So you can see again, it's fully lined. And the lining is in perfect condition. It's It looks like it's satin and there's no pulls. There's no, there's no rips. There's, looks like there's one tiny, tiny, tiny little place that has unstitched from the wool, but like literally two inches. The rest of it is still stitched in. And the wool itself has a little bit of pilling. I don't know if you can kind of see there. You can see there's a little bit of pilling on it, but at a glance, it's in really good condition. It has a little bit of a musty smell to it. So you probably will need to get it dry cleaned, admittedly. Um, but I think I'm selling it for what I think is a pretty good price. I paid up for it because I was planning to use it in a production. So I didn't plan to resell it. Um, so I'm just, you know, make, basically making my money back. It is a fabulous piece. I hope somebody likes it and it'll go to a good home because it's 20 bucks. So $20 for that cape, uh, 20 bucks by giving me number 42. $20, 42 for the cape. That is fantastic. People are saying very Harry Potter and Hobbit-esque, but I think that 
color is just gorgeous, <sighs> man. I just watched, um, you know, you get, I have the TV on in the background when I'm working and I just finished watching, um, I think it's called The Collection on Amazon Prime. It's the first season of it. And it's about a couturier after it, after the war in France. And that's what it reminds me of, like that kind of satin, that kind of a cape, that fitted shoulder cape, you know, very restricted movement um, it is very, very cool. It's a good series. Uh, if anyone's, if you've not watched that, if you like fashion, it's a, it's a cool series. So it looks like that is going to Nettie. Yay, congratulations. Man, that's fabulous. So thank you, Nettie. And that should, I should, I can fold it up pretty small so it can fit into a decent, a very a reasonably sized box. So it won't be expensive uh, to ship that. And Louis uh, agreeing, it's fabulous. <laughs> All right. Next piece also came from the last. Um, I am not including the brooch, but I'm going to sell the earrings that we decided with uh, Katie's help were not a pair or they were not a match to the brooch. So I'm selling the, the earrings separately. This is a pair of clip-on earrings. So admittedly, we're definitely the vintage and not necessarily to everyone's liking, but these are fantastic enough. Even as somebody wearing pierced ears are gonna wanna wear these. It has a two-tone gold and silver motif. You can see the scroll work. You can see, you can see me through it. Hello. Um, so you've got some detailed cut work. I'm assuming the pearls are faux because this is not marked as gold or silver or platinum or anything. So these are costumes. I'm assuming that the, the, the pearls are costume as well. But the pearls are in perfect condition as the jewelry is as well. So they are a pair so that when you wear them, you would wear them. Yes, I will wear a pair of earrings. I've done it before. You would wear it so that the pearl faces forward. So they are mirror images of each other so that you have the pearl moving forward on both of them. Yes, I have no pride. Hey, if you look in my videos enough, you'll find the one where I uh, post a picture of me dressed in drag. So, um, you know, nothing's wrong with that. Anyway, so it's a very cool pair of earrings. They are not signed. They're not marked in any way there. So they're just costume pieces. There's a very cool costume pieces. And I'm selling the pair of earrings for $10. So $10 for the costume jewelry earrings by giving me number 85. $10, 85 for the two-tone and pearl earrings. Those are really lovely, Patrick, and you do wear them well. <laughs> Thank you. I was, uh, so what I, for those who, that was news and I probably just lost some subscribers. Um, but yes, I did play, a, I did dress and drag for a role. Uh, if you know the movie, Some Like It Hot, oh, there was a musical version of Some Like It Hot called Sugar. And I did the musical version and I played the Jack Lemon role. So I played the Daphne Jerry role. Um, so I actually had to change multiple times. I had to wear a woman's bathing suit. Um, I had to wear a ball gown. I had to wear many, many things. And I had different earrings and jewelry for each. Um, being a woman's a lot of work, especially when you look like this. So I was gonna say that probably made you appreciate all the gussing up women have to do. <laughs> Absolutely. The the wig mistress hated me because there are multiple times I had to take my wig off and I just grab it and pull it off. And she's like, do you know how much work it is to make that wig into something that looks like it's hair? You know, not just like some wacky, um, you know, wacky, scraggly piece of hair. Do we have, have any pictures on that? No takers on that. Okay. I like know that they have to thread each of those hairs individually to make the wig, so it's a ton of work. <laughs> All right, so this is a little piece, uh, a little, a little, um, Porcelain tray, heavy. I, I like ironstone. It's not ceramic, but it's 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 heavier than a traditional porcelain tray. It has a stamp on the back of it, which I did not have a chance to research. I want to say it's I rice, I R I C E. So it's like a something I rice product. It's just a simple little dish. I don't think there's anything particularly uh, special. Um, so the um, Debbie from our Vag Vagabond Travels, if you go back into my old videos, I do two I do two videos talking about theater. 
And one of them is on props and one of them is on costumes. And if you look at the one on costumes, I purposely put my picture in drag all the way at the end. So you had to watch the entire video or learn on fast forward uh, in order to find my image in drag. So um, anyway, so this is just a simple uh, you know, dresser tray, pin dish, under plate for just about anything. It's a simple uh, white kind of cream white color. And then this cool like acanthus design off to the side with the gold accenting. It's just a really simple piece. Like I said, like almost the weight of an ironstone piece. It's really pretty and it's only five bucks. So $5 for the little under plate by giving me number 52. $5.52 for the little plate. That is just beautiful. And I've heard of eye rice before. I just I thought I had two, and I just I, to be perfectly honest, I forgot to look it up before we started. So I apologize. I, I pride myself on doing the research, but sometimes even with only thirty five items, it's hard to do all the research. And I see Mickey Michelle D is picking up number fifty two. Congratulations, Mickey! That is a gorgeous piece. And uh, when you get a moment, Nate was wondering how many items are left. He's wanting to fix dinner for his parents. Four. Four items left, Nate. I'm going to pull up really quick because I appreciate those that have joined or that are still here because this is running longer than I would have planned. Um, I'm actually going to show you. Why can I not find it? Here we go. Oh, that's a great picture. Patrick. There we go, everybody. That's me as Jerry, as Daphne, sorry, Jerry slash Daphne with the wig. So that was, uh, that was my formal attire. And then the more hilarious one is this was a rehearsal where I'm in the women's swimsuit <laughs> with a beard. I still had my beard at the time and my chest hair. But you also see every gown that I was given, there's some big brooch or decorative item on my, on my chest because I have a tattoo. And so I had to cover that up because in the 20s or 30s, what were we in? Um, 30s, I think a woman would not have had a chest tattoo. So we turned it into a, a gag that as a guy, I would have a tattoo, but as a woman, I would not. So we had to cover it up. So for those of you, you, know, you get a little bonus by sticking around this long, you got to see me in drag. So hope that was worth you losing a little bit of your dinner time, uh, Nate. And if you need to go, we can make it work. There's only four items left. I don't want Bron to be waiting. Uh, the tattoos of where I went to college, actually. Um, so thank you for asking, uh, and Cave should not have, I probably shouldn't have mentioned that I had the tattoo, but whatever. Another piece of pottery. This is a little balser form vase. It is an unglazed bottom. It has this stone, uh, kind of the glazed stone texture across the entire thing. And it has this like natural form of the leaves coming, coming up with kind of the, the, um, the weed pattern, like the, the uh, fields, field flowers, wildflower patterns that are going in there. Um, it is fully glazed on the inside. So I think you could actually use this with water. You could use this as an actual vase. It is signed uh, 1983. There is an artist signature on there. It says Shaw and then it says B or MB 83. So I would say it's a studio piece. I do think it's too good of quality to be like a student piece. I think it's the production piece that might have even been part of a bigger series. Um, couldn't find it. Google Google Lens failed me. I couldn't find the artist. So it's just kind of a cool little piece. And it's only seven dollars. So seven dollars for the little baluster form vase by giving me number eight. Seven dollars number eight for the little vase. I love speckled pottery. I just think it's absolutely beautiful. Absolutely. And it's and it's like all different kind of productions can look good together because it kind of that glazing technique really ties, you know, dis, dis, disparate um, collections together. Um, and I still really like the earth tones. I mean, somebody I saw a video. Also, if you've not watched on Netflix, Bridgerton, 
great, great period piece. Really? Somebody did an article in one of the home decor magazines and talked about how to do the Bridgerton look and started doing, I'm like, you people are smoking something because everything was whitewashed furniture. Everything was pale blue. Everything was like Magnolia Farms. I'm like, you are trying to push an agenda here. You need wood tone. You need grounding. You need something that's going to hold all that color down. And um, it, they they missed it. And I, I, why am I on that soapbox? I have no idea. But it, I do like it. Some people don't like it. But for costumes, even the woman that was did the deep dive with me, Julaine, she loved the costumes from that. She thought they were very period appropriate. What she did not like is they made it look like you could get a ball gown done in a day. <laughs> She's like, that would not have happened. So... And I see Nettie's picking up number eight, and that was quite a popular item. So congrats, Nettie. I Great. Think. Thank you so much, Nettie. All right. The next one is an item that also was in uh, one of the, the live haul video that I did with uh, with Katie. It is a little bulbous form porcelain pot that has these little um, handles on it that you can use to string together to hang it like a hung pottery. It has almost like a cloisonne look to it. It is not cloisonne, it's all pottery, it's all painted, but it has the gold accenting. So it kind of looks like it's been enameled with cloise as a cloisonne style. When doing a little bit of research on this, it turns out that this is one of those designs from Franklin Mint. It was uh, treasures of the um, Shoguns or travel treasures of the sets. I can't remember who it was, but it's, it was a series that they did. Very beautiful, not particularly common, uh, considering it's Franklin Mint, um, but it was done at a time in Made in Japan that had a uh, foil label, and this one, the label fell off. So I think the problem is a lot of people might have these, but they don't know what they are because the label's not on there. So, you know, again, Google relents to the rescue, figured out what it was. They regularly sell in the $20 and up range, depending on how they're described. Uh, this one I just thought was a really fun piece, and I am selling it for 12 so $12 for this little porcelain pot that I just think is absolutely gorgeous. It's kind of got that, um, you know, the Asian motif with the, the florals, got some tulips in there. Uh, 12 bucks, whether you hang it or set it on a pedestal, $12 for number 17. $12, 17 for the little porcelain pot. It was it was yeah, I absolutely love that one. All right, this one I was I was planning on saving for, for Vinny, but I don't think Vinny joined us tonight, so I'm going to include it anyway because this came up in the sale and none of us could figure out what it was. And then I think, was it you, Katie, or somebody? Did, I finally figured it out that this is is a pinup girl. It's a little pinup girl. There's a little text there on the side that actually says pinup girl. They were very creative. She's standing against the number 18 and... It has this little clippy thing on the back, but it's magnetic. So this is like a little coin. And then this just has the magnet to hold the coin. And I had no idea what it was and neither did the woman in the estate sale. Were you the one that came up with it, Katie? Yes, I was able to tell you it's for golf. <laughs> and Nancy, Nancy clipped it right even before you said it too. So she also said it's a golf marker. I've not played golf since, you know, basically since before Huckster Helper was born. So I did not, this did not register. So it's just a kind of a cool little coin that is a golf marker, but you can put this on your hat, put this on your, you know, put this on your pocket. You've got a little pinup girl. You got a little pinup girl that you can wear. So it's just a cool little piece in excellent condition. And it's $6. Six dollars for the little magnetic thing plus the pinup girl um, coin. Six dollars by giving me number ninety-three. Six dollars ninety-three. That is definitely a Vinny item. Great for his junk jar. Absolutely. So sorry he's missing it, but I've only got one item left. And I see Halem picks that up, number ninety-three. He gets that, and that is all right. Very cool piece. And Jewel T is picking up number 17. Thank you, Jewel T. And thank you. And if you could give us a phonetic, is it Halem or uh, what, how did you say it, Katie? Uh, Halem, but I could be wrong. I'm, I'm not the uh, end all be all on pronunciation. So, yeah. So, congratulations. Uh, Melody's 
uh, second half. Um, so if, but I'd love to be able to pronounce, I want to be able to pronounce your name correctly. So Halem. All right. So you were correct, Katie. I was pronouncing it wrong. Uh, so thank you, Halem. All right. The last item is uh, another industrial piece. It is a belt buckle. It's as simple as that. It is a Levi Strauss belt buckle. It is in perfect condition. It's a fairly solid, um, probably white metal with the bronzing technique to it. Uh, nothing special, just a piece of industrial that for some reason was the last thing I picked up. So we've got um, Levi Strauss belt buckle for four bucks. So $4 for the little industrial belt buckle. That would look great in a junk jar, a junk drawer, a junk jar too, as long as it doesn't, you don't crack it. $4, number 90. $4, number 90. And so it's Halem. So, okay, Michelle's trying to be helpful, but I think you're saying, I think you might be incorrect, Michelle. So I think Katie was correct with Halem. So, okay, we're good. All right, so $4. Um, and so the other items that did not sell are behind me. So if anybody wants to see any of these items, um, let me know. It looks like we did have a taker on the belt buckle. Yes, Michelle Ann is picking up the belt buckle. Excellent. Okay. So if you want to see anything behind me, let me know. Otherwise, I cannot believe 35 items took me over two hours. But hopefully you're entertained. You, I've got more people now than when I started, so that's good. Um, if you bought from me for the first time, and I'm so, so happy. I There were a lot of names I didn't recognize, so I appreciate. Uh, Kylie is asking about the tray. Do you mean the um, number 52? I think she she means the uh, the pottery tray behind you, the, the ironstone. It is not enameled. It is just a glaze over ironstone, like a very heavy earthenware uh, glazed, glazed throughout. Um, it does have a stamp on the back, which I don't think I highlighted. Um, Alfred Meekin, I think. Yeah, Alfred Meekin, England but it is not enameled. It is just simple. Um, the copper is just a color underneath the glaze. That is beautiful. And I see that someone has 79, Mary. Number 79 was the postcard lot. So this was the Ohio Turnpike, Palm Beaches, Mount Vernon, and Salt Lake, and these were all the folder unfolded pieces. Yeah, Nancy, it is. It's a Meekin piece that goes, it's worth way more than what I'm selling it for, but it is going to be expensive. It's not expensive, but it's heavy to ship. So if it doesn't sell here, I'm going to put it back on my oven, on my stove. But yeah, I can't keep everything. So this is the, what did I open up? This is the Salt Lake City one. So this one is the number $79, nine dollars. Okay, so Mary's passing on that. That's no, no worries, Mary. Don't worry about it. I have other cities. So if you were looking for something in particular, let me know. Um, I might have them. Um, yeah, sorry, Dana. This is this may be well, I doubt it'd be buried with me. There's little notes inside some of them, letting the huckster helper telling her which pieces are valuable. You know, they all have decent value, but some are more valuable than others. And I'm like, don't send them to Goodwill, please. Yeah. Um, so there's a couple places that specialize in, um, there are a couple places that specialize in uh, selling that type of Crocs. Um, so I'm like, you know, it'll be worth it to save it and make sure it goes to the right place if you want any of the money. Uh, Cause I have a feeling she's not going to want that in her own personal collection. Um, and the lusterware, sorry, the two pieces of lusterware are, um, are not for sale. Uh, those I, with the pink on the inside, I think that already sold. Or that had already sold, yes. Um, these, this sold. one is the, these have the blue, and I liked these because it matches kind of the blue that I've got on the uh, on the stoneware itself. i pull it up a little bit. As you can see, all the stoneware I've got is the blue decorated stoneware. So I liked the cobalt lusterware, and I like the way those look. I was trying to build up a sewer tile collection. And it's just, they're so expensive that the ones I could afford, I didn't like the way they looked. So I'm gonna do copper. So that's, that is my my goal. Um, 
So anybody else uh, want to see anything behind me? Just let me know. Sorry, Nettie. Um, yeah, sorry if you missed that. Um, the uh, Anyone who's purchased for me for the first time, just send me an email if you can with your shipping information. Uh, for those who have purchased before, if you want to send me a note, I don't mind, but I have you. I know what, thanks to Katie and to Nate, I, I know who bought what, what numbers, all that kind of stuff. Um, but if you ever see anything on a haul video, uh, if you ever see anything in my Instagram posts, drop me a note. If you want to pick anything up, I can always add it to your shipment. Also check out my eBay, my Etsy stores. I have no problem pulling something out of my eBay or Etsy or even my booth. I've done that multiple times. Uh, so just check out all my content. Thank you for hanging out with me tonight. Hope you guys all had fun. Thank you so much for all the new people who are joining me. And uh, make sure you check out some of the other sales. Uh, Nancy from This Overstuffed House, I think you're doing a sale tonight. I want to say you did it. You're doing it at 1030. So like in four minutes. So I'm very sorry I ran so long. Yours is normally at 11, but I want to say you said you're doing yours early. So if you've been here, hop on over to this. What is it, Katie? It's this. Overstuffed house. This overstuffed house. This overstuffed, all right. This overstuffed house, all one word. I was going to say, I knew there was something I'd written down. Um, so this overstuffed house, that's Nancy. She's got some great fun stuff. Uh, make sure you catch her sale next and uh, check out some of the other sales. Um, thanks for joining me. Thanks for putting your trust in Trusty Huckster. Have a great night. Bye, everybody. Bye.